Keep going. Remember that name. Good pizza with three Z's, baby. Three Z's. What's up, fam? It's your boy, JP. Good pizza. Yo, we got a crazy episode for you today. The homie Zach Woods came through to tell his story straight out of Compton, straight legend in the game. He's coast to coast like Space Ghost, a serial entrepreneur. Man, you're going to get a lot of game from this episode, man. I can't wait for you guys to see it, man. Check it out, man. Zach Woods, a.k.a. Two Stack Zach, the realest fell in the trap. We'll see you on the show. So yeah, man, Zach was it's good, baby. Oh, man, Thanks for coming good, through, man. man. Good pizza, man. I yeah, had to pull man. up, come check you guys out. You already been, know, man. Two been stack. Too this long. Bitch. We've been trying to plan this shit. Yeah. You know? Finally, I'm in the sack town. Yeah, you know, I had to go bro. get my J Dub fitted. You know, you what know what I'm talking about. Hat. Yeah, the bro. niggas know I'm out here. No looking trap boxes all over the country. You, you know? hear me? So, Hell yeah, bro. It's good. Good to be here, I've man. I've been uh, I've been a fan since I've seen the um since Zach Woods was a sticker on a pack of Backwoods, bro. And I just appreciate you, bro. I've watched it fucking grow and boom from there, bro. And uh. You know, just just to see that whole journey is fucking ill, and I want to dive into all that. But before we do that, thank you, appreciate it. No doubt, we got to take it to the story behind the story, man. Let's oh, uh, yeah. let's take it back to Compton, back in the day, back in the day. Fucking, you know, what was it like as a shorty growing up? Walk us through the childhood first, bro. And then oh like man, high the childhood shit. was was crazy, man. I feel like the childhood is what really, like I said, shapes the man. Cause it's like, yeah, you, that's a fact. you have to really go through some shit to really, you know, coming out of LA, coming out of Compton, you're going to go through some shit that the average kid's not going to see, not going to deal with. Yeah. So, you know, it was a, it was a rough upbringing. I would say like, you know, but I always, we all, one thing I can say about it being from the hood and from like so much trauma and negative shit going on, my family was so big and strong and full of love. So like I always, that's it was shit. never like, it was never like. We were in the hood just like I know some niggas be in the hood, they don't they don't have their moms and dad yeah, be on dope and yeah, it'd be all yeah. types of other shit. So I never really had that situation, but I just did have, you know, my father was involved in the street life. You know, we lost him at a young age. I lost him at a young age at five years old. Damn. You know, and uh, you know, to murder, which is never oh, easy. That's fucking crazy, so it's bro. like, you know, but it it like I said, these are these are things that like, you know, you just you just had life hit you with when yeah. you when you living in the city Damn, like dude. that. It's like you know, pops got killed three months after my grandfather had a stroke. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so I'm shit, like, man. I lost two of the the most the most influential men in my life three months apart at five years old. So if you can understand Jesus. that type of that's you know, trauma, bro. yeah, and then that's not even that's not even the trauma. Like the trauma is. You know what I'm saying? That was my intro to trauma. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. my hello. This is death. Yeah. Of the right. most important. People, your 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 yeah. your two father genetic, you know, bro. my father and grandfather. So mm. it's like you you deal with that, and then you start realizing, getting older, getting older. Now the fucking now the trauma's coming, yeah. the gangs, the guns, the drugs, the yeah, you know, bro. and then not only that, just the the starting to witness things. Like I, I remember, you know, walking. We were living in South Central with my cousin. He was a crip. And walking to the to the swap meet, Slauson swap meet. Yeah, you know, encountering bloods in the fucking alleyway for the first time. I'm eight years old. He's like thirteen, fourteen. You know, yeah. I'm not of age, but I'm sure. involved with the shit because of by association. What he's, you know, he's of age. Yeah, he's fourteen with a blue rag in his pocket. Yeah. So these bloods is coming, you know, and I'm just like, you know, I'm a little kid at the time, but I yeah. see the strap and I see the gun to his head and I see the gang and five niggas surround him and you know so i'm like you know you know what you're involved with and you know what you're around at a young age so yeah bro. i say it was it was tough but it was also very lit too because it's like you're also seeing that you know this is this is the shit you see on tv and you see yeah. in movies and you see everyone's trying to emulate this shit it's crazy bro it's crazy because it's like that's why it's like for me i never really you know i never really got into the whole like we live it we don't right. have to. We don't have to like. Like, there's no we watching. Look for there's it. no watching the NWA movie for me. Yeah, right. I lived it. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? No the doubt. NWA. If I when I watch that movie, I feel cheated because it's like you guys didn't even tell close to the whole story. But I mean, you can't no tell doubt. the whole story in two hours. So I understand it. I yeah. get it. Yeah. But it's just like you know when you've really been there. Yeah. When you really, it's like trying to trying to explain like. What it was like being a Lakers fan in the '80s, like you guys yeah. could you you don't know because you weren't there. Like yeah. I was, you know, Magic was just 
Magic and oh and Kareem and we had Pat Riley and yeah. you know we have all this shit going on and so it was like it was just a beautiful thing like being in LA as a kid I feel like I I grew up in a in in a time where it was like the probably the best time to be in Los Angeles you know what I'm saying well so. not to, not to mention you you was in LA during you know not with all all the gang shit but the crack era bro literally that, I'm, bro, a like product, I'm a product I'm a product of the era, crack bro generation if you really want to if you really want to get if you really want to get down to the details of it like born in the early 80s you know what i'm saying pops like this is like some real i'm i'm you want to hear some gangster shit talk talk to me bro i was i'm a anything goes on the pops was a pops was pops was doing time for a a manslaughter charge right okay caught a manslaughter charge beat a beat a dude to death in the late 70s you know did like a three to five year bid you know so like moms is going to fly in the Folsom penitentiary to see him okay while i'm uh you know i'm not even born yet you know i'm just but she's flying to go see him and then eventually you know <coughs> via conjugal visit. Oh, no shit. Little, little Zach Just is that. created, you know? Let's go. So, so like, and while Pops was in the pen walking the yards being two slap Zach, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was in the womb being little two stack Zach, was, you know? Guy, on the fucking, on the, on the, on the horizon. Yeah. So, uh, that, huh? yeah, like, my Pops actually got out of jail. Like, they released him three months after I was born. So I was okay. like, I would lit- I literally have, I have letters from my dad in prison, like Polaroid letters with him, like to my son on your 150th day of life. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, da, 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 I'll be yeah. home soon. No doubt. Can't wait to you know, like no my my young doubt. king and all you know. So wow. I had this like just massive man, wow. just like you know who was just yeah, so feared dude. and respected. You know what I'm saying? Loving like, on you. You know what I'm saying? Loving on me, son, bro. I was his son, bro. Wild, like dude. I was his world. First bro. son. First, First and son? only son. Wow. No you know shit, what I'm saying? Man. First and only. So it was uh. You know, That's it was it was a bro. crazy That's it was different. a crazy connection we had, and like even though yeah. he died at when I was five years old, bro, like we lived. I I remember I have vivid memories of being with him and things that we did together, and That's he cool, was just man. such a he was just such a like, it was crazy. He was such a it was such a wild time. You're living in the '80s, and and he was just a wild motherfucker, you know. And it was like yeah. when you're when you're living in a wild time with a wild motherfucker, and you're a, a little kid yeah. in a wild neighborhood, like it's just a lot of shit that can go on. So. But I just remember a lot of times, bro, like, you know, like being with my pops and recognizing the mass of man that he was and the the fear that he instilled in other men. And that's what was always crazy to me. Like, I remember being one time specifically being broke as a kid. We didn't have any groceries. My mom and him are fighting about the groceries. And my pops just, you know, my pops would have a have a bad habit of just storming off. He grabbed me and just storm off. Yeah. You know, he's not going to sit there and go back and forth with my mom. You know, yeah. he'll just... Grab me, go fucking storm off, pissed, hit the liquor store, get a six pack of Mickey's, and we'll ride to my aunt's house or we'll ride whatever, you know. But yeah. this particular day, we were arguing, they're arguing about the food. So we, I just remember we going to the supermarket, you know, and I'm thinking, like, okay, my dad doesn't want to argue with moms no more. He can go to the supermarket, get some groceries. Sure. Cool. You know, we don't know, I don't know the financial fucking scheme of yeah, everything, no doubt. you know what I'm saying? So we come walking out the store, normal basket, shopping basket, you know. I get in the car. And as I'm pops is loading the car up, some dudes come out the store. Apparently they're workers from the store. Pops just fucking walk the basket out the store and oh just God. start loading up the car. Like on his like wish a nigga would mode. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm six five. My dad my dad was also a fucking Jesus. he was six five, two fifty, a fucking Venice Beach professional bodybuilder. Oh fuck, bro. And a fucking prison nigga. Yeah. From the BGF, Black Gorilla Family, BGA, yeah. all that, you know what I'm saying? No doubt. Black Panthers, all sure, that shit. So sure. Pops was just not fucking around yeah. at any given second. So any given second. when you fucking when he wanted to go in the store and just fill up the basket full of groceries, you know, he did that. Yeah. And he walked out and I just remember the fucking workers coming out and the workers just trying to run out with the hey you know, all this noise. Yeah. And my pops just calmly closed the trunk and just walked over to him and just threw three punches and three motherfuckers were on the ground. And I got back in the car with a, like, remember that scene from, like, uh, uh, American Gangster when Denzel just kills the dude and just walks back into the yeah, coffee that's shop? That's that's how part, you just calm. Yeah. I'm like, it wasn't even, like, an exercise for him. You it wasn't, like, hype or nothing. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't hype or nothing. It was yeah. like, bro, these niggas... Three piece. And feeding my back fucking feeding it. my son, bro. Yeah, get out of here. Fuck out you of know here. what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's what the fuck it was. So I recognize that. I'm like, yo, this nigga is a you know, different breed. Yeah. And bro. men bow to him. You know, it was right. only it was only a 
it took a coward ass nigga to you know run up on him and do what they did to you know what I'm saying to, yeah. to bring him down because he was just you know it wasn't even about he was like a bully or nothing he was just a massive man who didn't take the bullshit and no a lot doubt. of people would come around with the bullshit so when you did that you would get checked on your bullshit yeah, and that's man. the problem we have today with a lot of shit motherfuckers don't get checked There's no motherfuckers have been running days. around this country running around this country for 20 years unchecked yeah doing ho shit you know what I'm saying now yeah. I, I'm I'm no fucking, you know what I'm saying, guardian of the gates or anything like that. But yeah. what I will say is I have a gene instilled in me from pops that doesn't tolerate bullshit or yeah. fuckery. And when I see it, you know, I call it out. I'm not yeah. going to sit here and just dwell in a pool of fuckery yeah, yeah, when yeah. They, there's a whistle that needs to be blown. Yeah. I'm going to blow the fucking whistle. You know, so some people don't yeah. like it. Some people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I give a fuck. I appreciate you like that, man. man. People I, need to be checked. Know, yeah. It, it, it's... It's good to be checked. People, it is. people, people who don't get checked are like, they don't want that because they know it's like, you've never been told no. You've never been told, hey, bro, that's not it, bro. Whatever you, yeah. that's that's not it. So then you have a fucking, you. It's like a callus Cycle. that builds up. Yeah. You just keep doing it and doing it, and then you have these little like these fuckers in the industry that we deal with now who just keep. They've never been smacked upside their fucking yeah. head. And you wonder why they keep doing the little snake shit they're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when they get caught by one of these real niggas out here, yeah. you got to spank them. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> that's why it's like I don't be going to these events and shit like that because it's like, bro, all I'm not one of these fucking sassy ass dudes who forgot what you said. Yeah. I know what you said. <clears throat> I made a mental note. I made a physical note. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when I see you, it ain't like, I'm not bullying niggas either, but I'm going to be like, hey, bro. You check it. What's good? Yeah. Because you was Twitter tough guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now it's a different story when a six foot five, 300 pound man is standing in your face. Yeah. You you want to look at your shoelaces. That's a different Nah, yeah. bro. Like, we don't, we, don't, we don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you stand on what you say. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing I've always been. That's where like, I come from. If you, if you say it, you, be, you know, there's been plenty of dudes that said, oh, I'm going to slap Zach Woods when I see him. Okay, well, when you see me, let's see you do it. Because I ain't going to lie, you don't look that big on Instagram. Yeah. But when you meet him, you're like, oh, this yeah, is a, a big lot, fella a lot right of people, here. You know a lot of saying? people say that. A lot of people say that when and they see me, oh, you're bigger you're funny, than I thought. You, know, you sound they, seem like a good time. Yeah, you know? I'm a good time. I am a good, <laughs> it's just, you know, there's, there's, there's funny, you're, cool big guys, but, you know, you just got to know. Yeah. We're not tolerating certain shit. You know what I'm saying? You're, like, it's a certain like the, shit. Uh, you're like the better friend. I'm a better friend than an enemy. You know? That's how I'd like to imagine it. You know? Because, you know, like, I come, I from, a, I come, like from, a, I come from a crazy place with yeah, a lot man. of crazy Look. individuals. And I don't want to go back to that world Look, or, or bring that old me back. I'm trying to live yeah, this man, new Zach evolving, with life. Bro. I'm trying to be my, be my own, you know, CEO. And, oh, shit. Drop my cannolis. And run this drop brand. the cannolis. Drop the fucking Get cannolis. Your cannolis over here. <laughs> Edit that out. Well, Edit you, that you out. cut you cut your teeth in Compton, but what do you want? But we're all product of our environment. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You, so you, it's tough. It, and could, I, this is what I find. I find myself having to let shit go now. Yeah, you, you know, do. I'm a fucking I'm a fucking old man now. I know, dude. Not fucking too old, but you know I'm I up just, there. I just joined the forty I'm getting, club too. I'm, getting, I'm, 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 I'm in the forty club, baby. You know, yeah. but forty's the new thirty. It feels good. I, it's I don't better mind than it, I thought. Bro. I don't mind it, bro. I, you know, it's crazy. It's definitely it's better up. than I thought. The, my thirties wasn't bad at all. No, nah, thirties. What cool. my thirties were such a learning experience yeah. for me, bro, because my twenties were fucking wild. Yeah, they're supposed to be. Yeah. I was talking. I'm talking about yeah. when I turned thirty, bro. I was. I was fearful of like, damn, I just let 10 years go by. Yeah. Everybody who was worrying about what the fuck they're yeah. supposed to do and trying to figure out what their what their uh, career path's going to be and all this stuff. And it's like, bro, like I was trapping, partying. I'm fucking got famous cousins and famous family and going to tours and this and that. So it was like there was never any structure to like where I'm, what I'm going to do with my life. Yeah. All I knew was I hated working for someone. Yeah. I could not do that shit because okay. I have the same fucking thing where it's like five o'clock comes around. This guy's been mouthing off at fucking two. I want to beat his ass in the parking lot at five thirty, bro. Yeah. Because you think you can talk to me a certain way. It's like that's one thing. Is like in this life, there's just levels to shit. Yeah. You know, like I know. No matter how fucking tough or badass or whatever the fuck I think I may be, I know, like a man like my father, of his stature, of his respect, of his just manliness. I would never ever disrespect him in a way that's gonna lead to him having to fucking check me. 
Yeah, yeah. You sure. know what I'm saying? Because you don't. You, you know the, the game, though. That's you know why. the game. Yeah. You know what, and it's not about picking your battles wisely. It is to an extent, but it's it like is. it's also about just just knowing physical. Like this nigga will beat the shit out of you. Bro. Yeah, bro. Boy, who like I don't. That's what I don't get about a lot of these dudes now who just think it's so so cool to just tough guy talk. Yeah, yeah. I don't and like then, tough and then, guys. And then I don't. I don't like it either. You know, I don't like it when you when you <clears throat> put me in a position where I have to be a big guy. Yeah. You know, I want to yeah. be a fun, happy guy. Yeah, man. I'm living life. I got my brand it's a two going. Stack, baby. I'm come two on, stacks, man. baby. But it, I come, like but I said earlier, bring me back I am the son bro, of two please. slap Zach. Yeah, yeah. You know, my doubt, dad no was get, locked away for slapping nigga to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just say, not. I don't know if it was an open fist, might have been a closed fist, but yeah. that manslaughter charge is real. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And like, I don't fucking, I don't like incur, you know, not. Pushing We're violence. Not pushing violence. I'm just, just saying. What could don't happen? Don't be a fucking jerk. What could? Don't be a jerk. <laughs> don't be a fucking jerk. It off. goes back to the old saying, you know, ev- you know, for the tough guys out there, right. you know, everybody's a gangster till a gangster steps in the room. Everybody's you know a saying? fucking. And then you know, everybody's gangster level gets checked. Right. And like, you know what? Right. And I'm the, not so the tough. crazy part about it, about that is too, is because it's, I've been in those rooms. Yeah. I've been in those rooms where the gangsters motherfucker walks in. Yeah. Shout just, out my boy Two T's from Bonnie Hunters. Shout out my my nigga Mike Allred from Cedars. Shout out to a lot of my guys. It's shout just, them out, man. Shout they just, out. you know, these are guys that just they just command respect. Yeah. You know, when you walk and they walk in the room, and it's not always about how you look. Yeah. Cause my man Two T's big bulldog diesel motherfucker. My man Allred little skinny, look like a little you know. Doberman yeah. type skinny. But if I fly away, well, well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They'll yeah. send you to the Lord. <laughs> They'll send you to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's yeah. the yeah. shit that I, I. The one thing I I do know. Yeah. yeah. Size sure. or color, sure. none of that matters. They will send you to those gates. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm yeah. saying? No and that's why no I'm doubt. just like, okay. So whenever you you do see, you know, I've been around homies who was gangster, whatever. But but then I have my other homie who come around who was really gangster. Yeah. Really with and the it. room gets fresh quiet. off a of drive by. Yeah. Fresh off of, you know what I'm saying? Just don't know what the, scared to be around the dude because you don't know what he a just nutty. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know what he's just come from doing. Yeah, right? You know what he I'm saying? Like did so his stuff real quick. Those are those motherfuckers that you got to, you know, you definitely. It's a nice lighter, my friend. Oh, you know, thank you. I don't use Bix, so. No, I'm done with those. I'm a huge fan those. of uh, torches, ST bro. DuPont. ST DuPont. I love torches, all torches, but ST DuPont is my That shit's my favorite, as fuck, baby. bro. You know, yeah, we got the, you know. Ooh, Little with the camo, way. let's go. Mm-hmm. What's up, pizza fam? It's your boy, JP, Good Pizza. Check this out. I'm getting a lot of questions on where I can find the fire good pizza. Check this out. We got you covered. We're in NorCal, SoCal, Central Valley, San Diego. We got you covered on the slices. Peep the list. Go check out the shop. Tell them Good Pizza sent you. Peace, love, good pizza. So let's uh real quick before we, because we hopped around a little bit. So boom, we're we're still in Compton. You're still, still in Compton, shorty. Yeah, still shorty. You're still shorty. So what what was like the um, so you lived through the riots and shit like that too. Oh yeah. Touch oh, on yeah. that, man. What was that like being a kid living through the Compton riots? It's bro? actually crazy. It was uh, actually it was that was more so South Central. Okay. But oh yeah, yeah, that was South <laughs> Central. Oh hey yo. But at the time, uh, at the time, my my mom was actually this is after my father passed, so. My mom was dating a, a a guy who lived right on Jefferson and like King, like right okay. around the corner from where all the shit was happening. Okay. So we were in the fucking we were in the what they call the thirties. It was off okay. of like Arlington and like thirtieth Street. Okay. And his crib was literally I could see the smoke from the liquor stores that were catching on fire. Oh shit. From the neighborhood. And wow. we're not, we're talking about we're li- like 30th Avenue off of Arlington. We're talking about one of the streets in LA with like the most beautiful, picturesque row of palm trees you've ever Is seen. Is that where everybody takes pictures? No. Okay. Everyone takes pictures <laughs> in Beverly Hills. Oh, that's they, that block. They I go to Beverly it. Hills you to do that. You They're not you. going to 31st Street to do that. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, that didn't but, sound uh, right. But it looks like in Beverly Hills they have, but but there's different palm trees too. Like no in doubt. LA in the hood, specifically the really, really tall, tall, skinny ones. Those are the ones that look, you know, that look the best for okay. LA. So okay. we would see, you know, you could literally look out my backyard and see the palm trees and see the smoke 
from oh, the from shit, the riots man. right around the corner. And like I said, it was it was crazy because I was young and didn't really have too much of an idea what was going on. Yeah. But I had all these older cousins who were involved in the street. So no doubt. I'm at my aunt's house or my, my mom's boyfriend's house and we're just chilling and I'm having all these older dudes that I'm around, family members, friends, whatever, who were actively rioting. Okay. Actively outside rioting. Oh, actively shit. out there in the riots, bringing me home. My first pair of Jordans came from the LA riots. That's kind of legend, bro. It is legendary. You, you know, still have them? But yes. I don't have them. I wish, I wish you I did, bro. God, I wish I fucking did. <laughs> Those would be legendary. But like, yeah. it was crazy because like, my cousin literally told me one day, like, what do you want? And I didn't know what wow. he was talking about. And I was like, bro, go. He's like, yeah, I'm going. We're going out. And then they came back with all the shit. And I seen what the fuck, what the fuck he had. And I'm like, mm. okay, I need Jordans. I need all the McDonald's toys. I need. Mm -hmm. That was specifically, those are the two things I specifically requested. Toys. How old were you, bro? I was approximately, I was 10 years old. Okay. 10 years old. That request so was, is legitimate? That was a legitimate request. Yeah. I need some J's because A, we're getting to that, that the, the Reebok pump had just come out. Oh, God. It was like, that. it was yeah. like, you, people don't remember you this. You had either. the all whites with the red or the all blacks with the red? Right. I had and the people whites. People don't remember, like, the Reebok pump was the first $100 shoe. Yeah, bro. It wasn't the Jordan. Jordan wasn't even $100. Yeah. I think the, you know, but then once the, once the fucking, once they came out and really started pumping the, the m multiple Jordans and, you know, Jordan 2 and then, yep. you know, Jordan took it and obviously his game was going up too. So yeah. once his game, oh, yeah. when he started winning championships, the price went up. Oh, but I remember those Reebok pumps, those fucking first Jordans, those are like, you know what I'm saying? That's what every kid wanted. Yeah, bro. So when I had... Moms wasn't buying that shit for sure. Right. Not a chance in hell, straight A's or not. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, $100 right. on a pair of shoes it's was fucking, fucking unheard of back in the day. Crazy. Unheard of, bro. Like, I remember having that conversation with my mom, trying to get her to trying to get her to, to go drop the bag. She was like, nigga, you better be, the fuck you out better be going to Harvard. You want some $100 right, shoes. Right, right. <laughs> hey, man. It's a lot of money. So, yeah, no, it was a... Uh, it was a... Those are my two requests from the riots, That's and it was fire, the riots bro. was just a crazy. It was a crazy time, like literally the Reginald Denny beating, the Rodney King beating, all of that shit. That's like, what sparked it, right? That was yeah, the last. The Rodney, Rodney King, King the Rodney King beating is what sparked it all. Yeah, you man. know, obviously us never before seeing the police do what they fucking do on national, you know, on national bro. TV, and like I say, always, always, always gonna commend the guy who captured that footage because that was so legendary. Yeah. And yeah, just man. so legendary to be in the fucking, in L.A., on location, with a camcorder right. that had to be, like, this big yeah. at the time. Yeah. And just be shooting that shit. And just to not realize, like, I mean, that was a crazy-ass beating. That was. It was and I don't give a fuck what bro. drugs they want to say Rodney was on or what he did or what. Nobody deserves to be hit with a fucking billy club like that, yeah, bro. Man. That was repeatedly fucking, by multiple repeatedly cops. by multiple cops. Like that was they were winding up. So yeah, bro. You know, it, it was like, it was you know, it was like what we saw the other day. Did you see the fucking the Alabama situation the other day no, with the bro. fucking the boat oh, situation? Yeah, yeah, bro. So it was like that, bro. Like we yeah. we take shit, bro. We as as you know, people yeah. we would sit back and we've been hey. taking we take it a lot. <clears throat> hey, you know and what? it gets to the point where it boils over. They had it coming. They had it coming. I was and you know what's like, crazy? 90% of the time, they have it coming. Uh, and just because man. we're like, bro, even though we're gangsters and we're thugs and all this shit they want to fucking put labels they want to put on us, we're still some of the fucking coolest, most down-to-earth, friendly people, even after you fucked us over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, right, right. We still fucking no let doubt. you back at the barbecue. You know no what I'm doubt. saying? But oh, yeah, man. There's certain motherfucking shit you just can't, you can't let slide. And then situations like that Alabama shit, I saw, I was like, I can't even lie, bro. I, I can't even lie. I caught myself looking at my screen, just gripping my screen with like, with like such disbelief, like, oh shit. When I saw the dude so swim, Royal Rumble. when I saw the dude swim say, across, swim across the fucking water to get busy. But for his that was to get busy. And that wasn't even like, bro. You, you could even be, you know, Alabama's racist as fuck down there. Oh, so yeah, you definitely have the race thing and, and yeah, that's, dude. it's, it's deep. So I'm not going to say it wasn't, you know, racially charged at all, but 
I'm just saying, like, the simple fact that I love the fact of seeing all my young dudes come to the defense of the OG. Yeah. You know, because you don't you don't really see that too. Yo. With these, this young generation, they kind of on some wild shit. So Weird shit. You don't really see them helping the elders like that. But yeah. the fact that, you know. Not today. Hey, not you today. It was a big not Yo, today. Yo, but what moment. about the big man? He was just throwing these wild, slow haymakers, but Bro. still connecting. Connecting. He was, he was fucking And I really want to commend the OG who came Dude. out of left field with the chair. With the chair. I was waiting for the, the chair. The chair was the fucking the chair, bro. bro. He was, bro, you know what's crazy? Oh my I have God, a, you got to follow, you got to follow this page. It's called Pushing Black. Uh-huh. They have a fucking, they have a fucking <laughs> funny ass thing they do, bro, where they'll take, you know, they always have the videos where it's like, you know, the white dude's in the restaurant, he calls the dude the N-word, yeah. and the fucking, then the, the dude jumps up and starts yeah. going in. So every time this, this, this page one. pushing black, they fucking, they take it and they add the fucking sonic rings. And, and they'll, they'll add oh, the, the sonic they'll, rings, they'll yeah, add the, the coins. So, so when the black when dude hit. runs across and, bing, he'll hit the white dude and the rings come flying out. <laughs> oh and then when, or if like the dudes get repeatedly hitting, yeah. they hit it repeatedly, yeah, yeah, yeah. it would be like, they'll make the little Mario sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, bing, bing, bing. And then yeah. he'll get, like, one up. Get a one up. <laughs> 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 Yo. That's bro, wild, push, shout son. out to Pushing Black, bro. That's a funny-ass page, bro. But they always have the video, so they they reenacted. The, and that was a long video. It was, like, a minute and 42 was seconds long. long. That was a long. That was a fucking I have it on my dog. phone, edited by Pushing Black. And they put Fire. rings. You see the dude come so with the funny. chair. Bing, just yeah. rings flying yeah, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, bro. Yo, it's, it's so funny, fucking bro. funny, bro. Because at first I was like, oh, you don't hit the lady and my wife. My wife's black. She's like, oh no, 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 no. She fucking deserves. She ran the video bro. all the back. You see this oh, bitch? You, oh, I'm and like, that's the greatest part I'm about like, that. All right, all right. All the aunties, the all the, the aunties chair. in the video that were on that second row filming. Commentating. Ooh, ooh, get him. <laughs> get him! Oh, you in trouble when you get across that water? Yeah, man. Go get it, bro. That shit yeah, was so dude. funny. I was yeah, like, I bro, that sounded like my aunties for real, bro. Yeah, I don't do that racist shit, bro. Nah, that bro. Is, it's like, come on, bro. It's twenty twenty three. Come on, bro. now you can't be doing like that I don't shit, give bro. a fuck. I don't like a lot of people, but it's not because of their fucking skin color. You know what I'm saying? Or their fucking ethnic I, man. Background. I've I've whooped some racist white boys' asses oh. over my black homies. You know what I'm saying? I, you, Just you, like you seem like a type I don't that's deal been with at that the barbecue. You know, yeah, yeah, you I've been at the, the barbecue. You know, you got the, sis, the sister the, for a wife, so you know you. I, I've know been at the is. barbecue, the taco meat you out. The, you know what I'm saying? Little, you got the little, you know, mixed breed youngin. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so, come on. I love everybody, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's all about, man. Yep, exactly. It's all about loving everybody. We don't play those type games, bro. We don't have time for the like, bro. Yeah, they want us divided. They want us at each other's throats. They want us, you know. And, they, and the crazy part I'm realizing, bro, they want it not even just with race. They want it with brother and sister, gender, male and female, yeah. gender. Yeah, they're pushing it. Everything, bad, bro. bro. They want you guys, they want you just like this. Everyone. Everyone you're fucking bro. Democrat, Republican, you're going it's at it. It's all a game, Brother bro. and sister going at it. Gangs going at it. Fucking like whatever the fuck. Oh, you yeah, like, dude. oh my God, this is crazy. Like, bro, we need to, we need to get off this fucking beefing and bickering yeah, shit and bro. get back to just fucking just like strength in numbers seeing man. the fucking picture exactly the strength in numbers because we are fucking just a docile it's gonna take another generation bro like it's, bro, gonna, it's gonna probably gonna take, take some old some old heads and some old thinking to fall off I don't and even, die I don't need, yeah no that and hopefully that, hopefully that's instilled. happening now yeah because <laughs> I'm seeing we're seeing the we just seen the fucking senator get up there and freeze up <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Uh, he ate too many cozy cubes before <laughs> that long. He smoked the cannoli like, before he got up there. Huh? <laughs> yeah, they got these fucking... They got these fucking decrepit old these fucks up there. skeleton just, white men fucking right, just about to croak any fucking clicking. day. No, no, every four years. No, no, whatever the fuck yeah, benefits dude, them or whatever what the fuck? old bullshit. They're not fucking trying to hear nothing new. Like That's old why it's old like... Old money, bro. Old school money. That's why you, you're seeing like a lot of these states still just... Not not fucking uh, turn to the the cannabis yet because yeah you got all these old fucks just hanging on yeah bro hanging on to their old way of thinking and you got to see bro like it's not like that no more yeah bro those days are done done the so. money is you know what I'm saying is is what's what's important yeah yeah and you fuckers love money so why wouldn't you fucking get involved you know what I'm saying yeah, not to say the fucking Market's a fucking money maker because we all know that ain't true, <laughs> you know. No, it's not. But you gotta it's fucking, fucking not. you gotta fucking you know play the it's game. It's nice to have a couple of legal states still, you know. Yeah, no, yeah, we kind of need shout it. Shout out right to now. Texas, baby. Shout you know, out to Texas. what do you think? I'm in Houston. Bro. I'm in Houston living so, life. Yo, baby. I feel like everybody <laughs> loves loves Texas, loves being in Texas, and loves getting money in Texas. And it's like I, I feel like Texas, I must be missing. I, so I, I need was, to go check. It I was out, never. Man. I was never. Like I said, I didn't. I'm, I moved there roughly a year and a half ago. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't move. even say I wouldn't even say physically fully move there because I'm still yeah. 
in Miami. You I'm try going, state with it. I'm going to I'm going to fucking to uh, Friday to go open my fucking San Francisco apartment that hasn't been opened in two years. Jeez. It's been getting paid for. So I'm Jeez. just like, you know, I'm like, I'm all over the board. But yeah. since I landed in Houston, man, it was a uh, Texas has always been uh I would say pricked my interest. Let's just Is it say. welcoming? It's very welcoming. Yeah. It's very I mean Ain't tripping on OTs every come every out every Every part of the city that I've been to, or I've been to, I've been to all the cities, the big cities, and as far as a brand, a cannabis brand, you know, they're very welcoming. Cool. I don't, I don't feel like um, I ever had any issues with like coming out there and you know doing my thing with people or people feeling some type of way because like like always, I always give back too. You know, sure. like I've done three stash and dashes in Houston since I've been there in a year and a half. You know, yeah. I don't usually do multiple stash and dashes in one city but when i'm getting love in that city yeah. or they're spending money and they're treating me good yeah sure that's what i do you know and i don't do a fucking cheesy little oh let's go put a grinder in a, in a seven in the, in the bush yeah no i i do the whole box oh you shit. know we God fill up damn. A, we fill up a box oh that's not with a go. whole pound but i definitely put at least a qp no doubt that's respectful. some merch a tray yeah. stickers bouncing up pre-roll respectful. yeah I, I put a qp yeah. That's cool, man. I usually when I went because because what I my whole thing is with the stash and dash, I saw what people were doing with the ounce. You know, it's like and that's no disrespect. Everyone has you're giving back. That's cool. Yeah. But me, it's like I'm looking at it like okay, they see me getting a bag, they see me moving boxes and boxes in their city. I don't want, you know, let me go ahead and give a box away. Yeah. You know that little QP is nothing that you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. and all the extra stuff. And but then I also figured out a way to incorporate all the other brands. Yeah. That's so dope. it's like I. As I've as I've been there, I've been networking with all these cannabis mm-hmm. brands that are the locals <clears throat> that are doing their thing out there. So I've become friendly with them and become you know doing their events and stuff like that. So when I have a stash and dash, I'll just put it put the word out to the community. Yo, I'm gonna do a box giveaway. You want to throw some of your stuff in there from there you your go. brand? Yeah. Do some free promo. Let one of these fucking you know not so fucking. Baller ass kids, because you know the fucking kids are coming out to get that shit. You know, sure. Is I'm seeing a couple old people come out there too, but yeah. mostly the kids. The yeah, kids are quick, like bro. the kids that are like they're you ready. know they're just like notifications on, notifications on, <laughs> fucking, really? fully fucking Instagram, yeah. Twitter, everything. Yeah. Watching Zach on live and just got the fucking like I always say, I always tell them, you know when I'm when I'm about to do the staging, there, put your Nikes by the front door, baby, because this, this one's gonna be good. Yeah, because I'm always looking for a good hiding spot. I don't like to do it just in a bush. I want to make it challenging because, you know, no you doubt. have all this stuff you're giving away. Like, I don't want it to be just some easy fucking, you know. No, we're going on a Scooby-Doo mission. So that became a, that became a challenge of it, too. Like, how to how to make the, the every city I'm in, different city, going around, finding a location to hide the box. Okay. You know, so that becomes That's a cool. mission, you know. Or I'll, like, ask people, like, what's a fucking cool, like, what's a cool, like, location or something where, you know, like, ask them in the they'll tell me certain things. So, like, you know, the couple spots that I've done it were legendary. Nice. Like, I did one in Boston. The first one I did was in Boston. Okay. At, at Land's End. It's, like, the furthest piece of land out. There's a lighthouse out there. No shit. You literally have to, like, park the car on the street, hike in between these bushes, and then turn out of the bushes and walk out to the beach. And then there's, like, you know, a little sand walkway that takes you to the beach. So we were like, fuck it. We went out there with a couple of my guys, got some Samuel Adams, Went out there and there you go. threw a fucking threw a threw a <laughs> had, just had the box at the lighthouse and was like, "Yo, put the box at the lighthouse." Huh? We were like right there. We're just like whoever comes out to the comes out to the lighthouse to get it. You see, but I was there fucking running through the fucking thing. <laughs> we're sitting there drinking. I announced the shit. Ten minutes later, not even ten minutes, eight minutes later. Yeah, I'm looking up and I look through the forest and I see two dudes just fucking tracking it out. What? One dude's a little bit ahead of the other. Yeah, and they're fucking. <laughs> running and one dude that has the lead he's fucking fresh off work oh that's right button up oh say what airpods word. in oh you got the beats full going fucking might have the toms on oh fuck he was bro. footwear ready too I was like yo but what happened was when he was coming out we were coming out to or he was coming out to the water where the lighthouse was we didn't realize that the tide had came in because oh, we were shit. there for a little bit you know yeah 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 and while we were there the tide had come in so the little walkway the stepping stones to get to the to the lighthouse were were not there no more oh, no. they were like you know and bruh had to make an executive decision because dude was on his ass yeah and then the right in front of him was the fucking water so you just gonna charge it 
Yeah. <laughs> and fucking do the high step and risk getting slowed down. Yeah. Letting dude catch you or, you know, how you. Yeah. So, bro just did the unthinkable and front flipped. when he Right when he got to the water, it was crazy. He fucking just threw his body forward, front flipped, landed on his back. And rolled right back up to his feet. Splashed in the water. AirPods went flying. But he got the trap box. Damn, bro. And he held that shit up like it was the fucking most glorious Let's day of his go. life. Let's go. It know? was, man. And I'm like, bro, am I trust me, bro. What's in this box is way more expensive than those AirPods, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, don't trip. <laughs> <You know what I'm laughs> Yo, you take some fucking L's, great. you get some bigger W's, you know? Did you have to go through the water to get out of there? Since the tide came we in? We did. We high-stepped oh, it. We high-stepped it. Take the kicks know? off, high-stepped yeah, it. Yeah, you know high-stepped it real quick. No doubt, no doubt. It was like, it was a problem that we didn't even think till it was. Yeah, till right. You don't think about problem, that shit, you know? you know what I mean? I was like, oh, shit. We Because it was just like, bink, 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 bink. And then yeah, we. Yeah, man. I was like, oh, shit. Then it's funny because I videotaped. It's on YouTube and everything. No I shit? The oh, I got to see this, bro. Yeah. So I'm like, I fucking. It's it fucking was great. You haven't recorded doing the backflip? Yes. Oh, we it's might. Not, it's not a backflip. It's a front flip. Front flip. But I have it yeah. recorded. Oh, we yet. might. We might just slide this into the yeah, podcast. Yeah, slide <laughs> we'll it. We we'll find. We'll find this right there on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that's great, bro. Zach Woods TV. Zach Woods TV. I love it, man. Yeah, man. I love it. So, uh, what happens after high school, bro? Or how was high school? Oh, high school was actually crazy. So I get to high school. What high school did you go to? I went to this high school called California. I went to a few different ones, but I started this one called California High School. Shout out to Whittier, California. You know what I'm saying? I was uh, going there, and, you know, I was just finding my way in high school. My sure. first, first couple years, I wasn't really into school like that, you no know? Doubt. Wasn't into fucking homework and all these classes and shit like that. So I, I fucked off my first two years of fucking school. I ain't gonna lie. No doubt. I, w- I literally went to one school, then I fucking bounced to another school, and then I got kicked out of that school and ended up going to a continuation school where... I had two years left. I had zero credits going into my second year of high school and literally had two years to complete four years of work, you know? So I was Ooh. like, all right, go to the continuation school. You know, they hit you with the little packets or whatever. You do, yep. you just sit there and do do that shit. But it was cool. So I was getting through all that. And I was at the continuation school. And one day I got fucking hit by a car when I was leaving school. Damn, bro. I got fucking literally like, but I mean, like, it was a sign, bro, like, I was living so crazy and so fast at that time because I was like, let's say 16. You was hustling? Hustling, like gangster shit, gang yep. banging, yep. trapping, yep. stealing cars, you know, just doing all types of crazy yeah, shit, yeah, you know? Bro. And just fucking trying to just survive out in L.A., you know, just trying sure. to be a fucking young kid who got some bread and got some good weed and got some, you know, some a whip and all this shit. So it was crazy. Like, I ended up getting... I'm sitting there smoking a fucking blunt, and I literally flick the blunt into the fucking street. The light turns green. I step off the curb, and I don't even remember the car, you know, hitting me, but it gets fucking takes me out, you know? End up in the hospital. Damn, bro. And I'm in ICU for fucking 29 days, peeing through Holy a tube. Holy shit. Had to learn how to fucking walk again. Damn, bro. You know, at 16? At 16. Whoa. So I went from just trapping, like, crazy and it was yeah. crazy like i knew i was trapping so hard bro like like for a kid in fucking at that time i had fucking probably like three two three thousand in my pocket you know fresh fucking kicks on and a fresh like scotty pippen up to that money on. for that age in the 90s yeah too. in the 90s yeah you know? like i'm it's like I'm, 10 bands i'm doing my thing you know <laughs> but i'm like i'm flipping stress though yeah big, of course big of course. fucking stress yeah. packs on campus All and day. off campus so it was a fucking big like wake up call though, because I went from like just having a pocket full of money, getting ready to go re up and all this shit, to just boom, I'm in the hospital now, you know, and like fucked up in the hospital, not yeah, like dude. in the hospital getting out soon, yeah. twenty nine days it's, in the it's ICU, like no hope type it's shit. fucking like yeah, will think you you make you think you're gonna die, bro. No like, doubt, I was like around motherfuckers who were dying, or dying yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. So it was like a it was a real like sobering like humbling experience mm-hmm. like be thankful for every day bro because mm-hmm. one blink of an eye this shit could all be over you have know you carried saying? that with you since then oh bro i fucking still double fucking look when i'm crossing the street oh i now. bet i bet fuck bro. that bet. you know what I mean? i'll never want to never go shit, through that shit again bro. that shit is crazy i've never like i don't even realize like to me i don't even understand how it happened Cause you Cause didn't like, see shit. You flicked I didn't the blunt see and then shit. you in the hospital. The light was green, you know? The light was green and I flicked the blunt. Nobody was, was there with you? Somebody tell you what happened? 
Yeah, it was crazy. It was actually my boy was picking me up from from school. Mm-hmm. So he was sitting in the turning lane. Like, he was right, right. He had a front row seat. So he's oh, in the fuck. turning lane. I'm crossing the street like this. He's going to turn and pick me up. He's okay. sitting in the turning lane, blinker on. The car comes from this way. Boom, it hits me. And I fly 64 feet across the intersection. Boom, and land on the other side. And from one set of lines to the other set of lines. Chill. I cleared the whole intersection. Jesus. Two flips in the air, thirteen feet in the air. I came down feet in the air, on my fucking on my wrist right here. I broke my three fingers, my wrist, my elbow, my shoulder, and my collarbone. Damn, just just bro. breaking the fall, like just coming down, the fall like fall type shit. You know, got knocked completely out my shoes, like Damn, my fucking bro. Scotty Pimpin up tempos laced tight to the top, like I was getting ready to go hoop. I specifically remember like getting ready to go hoop. Yeah. Re up, then I'm gonna go hoop. Yeah. You know? And fucking knock me out the shoes, bro. Jeez. Like I still like I landed on I, I still have like the only really one of the things that really bothers me to this day from the accident is like when they knock me out those fucking shoes, my fucking foot, the side of my foot slammed onto the fucking concrete Ugh. so hard, bro. Like I have like a fucking because you were flipping it was like uh, a when slap I flip. yeah, yeah man. so like my Fuck. it's like my bare foot just like the sideways like on the fucking on the ball right that there. that shit the, mad sensitive bro bro mad sensitive bro Ooh. and then just to think like I even have to replay it in my head sometimes like damn like how the fuck my shoes go flying and then just have your foot just wham slam into the fucking shit so hard that. 20 years later, it's still, still giving me fucking, I still feel that shit. I believe it, I don't it, man. feel it bad, but it's just like, it's just Stare. like, sometimes, it's yeah, sometimes it'll be annoying, you know? Damn, it's not dog. pain, it's more like an annoying, just like, sting that'll yeah. just like, you know, like, bug sure. you sometimes. You probably got some, like, bones floating around. Oh, I got something. some, definitely some shattered you know bone I mean? yeah. fragments, yeah. some fucking nerve damage. There's got to be something going yeah, on. Yeah, something going on. I've actually, actually, it's crazy, during the pandemic, when I was middle of the track, Building Zach Woods in Boston. I was in a fucking crazy. I was in New York, leaving to come back to Boston. I slept fucking funny in, in the hotel, and I got up, but I had to go back to the Bean. So like, I, I woke up and I had the ill ass stiff neck. You know, mm-hmm. you know how you get that. It's no yeah, big yeah. deal. Usually Sleep two, ball. three days, whatever. You back. So like, two, three, four, five days later, bro. It's not getting. It's not going away. And it's actually getting worse. It's feeling like somebody's like digging in my oh, shit. So I'm like, man. what the fuck? And what what really made it noticeable is like one day I like I went to go pick something up and my fucking two fingers right here were not working. Like I oh, like if shit, I went to go pick chill. up the box like this, I couldn't grab with this side. You know, and I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, something's wrong now. What's yeah. going on? Because like I got nervous. So I went to and it was crazy because everything was closed. It was in the middle of the pandemic and there was nothing open, bro. Mm-hmm. And I literally had no fucking like, all I could do was just like, I called, was calling around to see if there was like a chiropractor or something. Yeah. By the grace of God, there was this one fucking chiropractor open on Harvard campus that oh, happened to yeah. be fucking, he was open and he let me come through with the mask and shit. And that motherfucker literally fucking took an x-ray of my shoulder and he was like, you been shot or something? And I'm like, nah, I ain't been shot, but I've been, you know, I've been in a bad accident. Yeah. You know, I got hit by a car, so my definitely fucked up my shoulder before. No doubt. He's like, yeah, because he's like, you have an injury that's really like, it's really only happens to people who've had like a massive trauma, traumatic injury there. And yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm like, it's called super scrapular nerve entrapment. Ooh, so basically, there's shit. like a nerve that goes around your shoulder right here. Yeah. And goes all the way down. Okay. To your fingers, so that nerve was pinched but the, oh, the reason why it was pinched it was because like in order for that nerve to get pinched like your fucking shoulder has to be blown away or you know you have to break it or something yeah. to like, expose that nerve otherwise it's not usually exposed oh, i got you okay. you know what i'm saying yeah. so it was like that's why the doc was like oh something had to happen to you for this to even yeah. be i'm like yeah i got hit by a car 20 years ago Fuck. oh okay well you slept funny and you triggered this fucking nerve that's been pinched, and it was fucking, it was crazy. It took me like three months to heal from that Damn, shit. Damn, dog, how'd you heal it? You, you couldn't do nothing. And the crazy part, you had to just, he told me just don't, you couldn't like stress the fucking muscle. Okay. Right? You couldn't like do anything to like trigger it, but the fucking fucked up part about it was smoking. Smoking when I would, when you, when I would take a fucking hit and I would cough too hard, 
It would hurt. The cough would send the fucking shooting fucking Ooh, pain up my fucking shit. rib. This is how crazy how you know the, all these nerves and shit are connected. Yeah, yeah. Because it would like, it would I would cough too hard, <clears throat> and it would send a shooting pain up my fucking rib cage into like my armpit, right to where the the center of like where the the mm. pain was like starting, and it would like, from there it would send a like shooting pain down my forearm. And it would feel like my like you know how like that feeling you get when you work out too too hard yeah. and your muscles are sore. Yeah, it would just feel like my entire fucking arm was just like my muscles were like overworked. No shit. You know what I'm saying? So like, and when that would happen, it was kind of like re-injuring. It's like if you if you re-injuring, re-injuring the muscle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for the next three months, I realized the smoking part was what what was triggering the injury to not go away. Oh shit. So I was like, all right. I had to literally breathe light on the blunts for okay. three months. I was waiting for you to say I, I quit for three months. Yeah, He's like, nah, no. nah, nah, nah. We're not no. doing that. I was we like, ain't doing that's that. rough. Nah. <laughs> I just had to breathe light. No I doubt. knew I couldn't get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. That no was going to fire me up. Ooh. Fuck, so I had to just, bro. you know, I was on the blunt. Just, just breathe easy, Pop. Breathe easy. Real light Stick little, little guy. Little guys. Little guys. Yeah. I was a little guy smoking for <laughs> three months, it. but then hey, whatever. after I stopped, once I stopped I didn't cough off a of, you know off a pack for like yeah. a good you know I'm over, making yeah. sure you're I don't scared, cough. You're scared to do scared that. Scared to big cough because yeah. I don't want to re-injure the muscle. Yeah, you know, so that, I was like, bro. fuck that. It was, but it was crazy. It was a crazy three that's months. A lot, man. And that's the only that's but just to think after all that I've been through and being in the hospital and going through all that shit twenty years ago, to think that they told me you're gonna have you know problems and shit down the line. Yeah, you're gonna be you know okay, bet I feel that you know, but I didn't think it was gonna be. I thought it would be way worse, you know, at age, oh, okay. gotcha, at gotcha, 40, gotcha. Yeah. dealing with fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, dealing with uh, injury, post injuries like that. I yeah. would think at this age it would be, you know, all oh, the bones are hurting or, yeah. you know, like I don't have nothing like that's that. Good, bro. So that's, it's a blessing, bro. Hell like yeah. I said, it was a very, that was a very traumatic incident. And, you know, that was what really kind of like, I come out of that. And yeah, go, what happens after that? So bro? I come out of that and go back to school. Okay. Right? I go back to school to finish off my fucking to go graduate, but I'm back at school now, and now I'm like, I'm legend because I survived the fucking sixty mile an hour car mm, crash. Man. And these motherfuckers, motherfuckers at school, I go back to school, and motherfuckers at school who just saw the accident and never heard about what happened to me after that, or never knew that I was in surgery or recovery, you know, you know, yeah, motherfuckers thought I died, bro, for real. Oh, no There's shit. a motherfucker, I didn't even know this, but I come to find out, like, because the accident was right around the corner from where I was living, motherfuckers ran to my house to go tell my grandparents. They just saw me. I'm dead in the street, laying in the street right now. Damn, the helicopter's bro. coming to get me. You know, and, like, that's why I got airlifted and all that shit. Yeah, of so, course, of course. So it was, like, stupid crazy. My grandma had to fucking, you know what I'm saying? My grandma, who doesn't drive, had to fucking yeah. figure out how to get to fucking, you know, East L.A. Medical Center and shit yeah. where I'm being fucking... Majorly operated on, you know. Then she she doesn't even know if I'm dead or alive. Damn, bro, she that's got my, heavy, you know, bro. It's crazy, bro. So it was like, you know, I'd see that shit, and but when I came back, and I'm like, like I said, it took me about, I'd say a month of recovery in the hospital, and probably like three months of recovery post post surgery. I had to go live with my aunt, so I was living in Inglewood at the time. Which was fucking another fucking experience because yeah, now I'm that like? now I'm 17. You know, still in the still life, blood. but I'm still, yeah, I'm all tied into the yeah. shit, but because of all my family members, you know, so like, I'm I'm connected to that shit for life, but it's like, now I'm 17, living in a, a different hood, but it's like, Inglewood's a pretty, pretty dominant blood area too, so we were just, you know, over there just, and I'm just seeing another gang neighborhood and yeah. meeting other fucking people in the community because like even though we were in gang neighborhoods like my aunts like i said my family was good people you yeah. know they were good solid you know black fucking people from the community and yeah everybody sure. had their little you know little fucking uh vices or whatever but sure you know what i'm saying as a as a most part like my i can remember my aunts and uncles always being like neighborly with the neighbors and everything there was a little sense of community you sure, know? Sure. even though there was shootings and shit no going doubt. on you know it was no like doubt. we still had that so it was cool like i just remember you know like all the different places i, I lived in la growing up as a kid from compton to pasadena to inglewood to, like i always have 
groups of friends and different, you know, different yeah, groups of, you know, different friends. chapters of your life. Yeah, different yeah, chapters. Cool. So it's like, you know, as I got older, you know, and I, now I have a whip and shit, now I can pull back up to these areas yeah. and go see my people from the, you know, so it was yeah, like, that's cool, man. that was always a, you know, a cool thing for me too, like growing up, like living in different places. Cause no doubt. I know a lot of kids have just lived in one place their whole life, you know? And for sure. Like I'm yeah, living, yeah, no like doubt. I'm living right yeah. now. I don't know where the fuck I live, but. Yeah, where I you love, your hats, I love, man. I love being, I love just being. Rolling Stone. A, yeah, I love being a Rolling Stone, baby. That's cool, you know, bro, so that's lit. cool. I mean, being a guy that has kids and, you know, I am, you know, I'm a good dad, so yeah. I'm tied down, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I respect that. Uh, you know, and I yeah, respect that. Let me give a fucking shout out to all the real dads yeah, out there, man, because you real motherfuckers good be out here gang. holding it down. Got you know, you, especially man. if you got fucking uh, little girls out here, because oh, I know yeah, it's tough bro. with the girls. I got a 20 year old. But even bro, if you got it, even if, oh my God. Yeah. You're yeah, one been, year away, been buddy. Fucking, it's been wild these last it's couple years. It's been wild. Now, I think we got it back on track, bro. Oh, okay. Woo! Okay, that's all that matters, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to give them a little, just be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just facts, be there. Bro. Yeah, like, man. bro, that's the main thing. Like, bro, I, I got, there, I don't got no kids, but I got two nieces who are three and five, yeah. and they're my fucking life. Yeah, you know breath what's up. and you know yeah my fucking tell my sister all the time cuz i see all this shit crazy shit going on yeah, bro. in the world with these pet pedos and all this shit and yeah, i'm just like bro. look bro if 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 ever if ever anything you can pack all this Zachwood shit up and put it in a fucking storage unit somewhere cuz i'm going down like Mary yeah. J Blige yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. like it's going down and yeah you know, yeah fucking bro. does of course, you know bro. like any of that shit like gotta protect the kids I'm not bro. I'm not with that shit it's with a the weird kids, ass bro. world out there bro you know? shout out to Russia bro to they who? just to Russia they just d this crazy bastard <laughs> no hear me out <laughs> for the pedo for the pedophiles right oh yeah yeah they yeah. just made it a law yeah that they're chemically burning off genitalias if you get hey. caught as a pedophile and Russia some people for the win. I'm sorry. Hey, I know we're not really fucking with Russia. I'm gonna go ahead and, go ahead and give my man Putin a fucking uh, uh, big up on that, that one, pop. You know you that that, that that's, that one. That's we we Burn we definitely need to yeah. We definitely need to get pricks. Get the you know fucking, what I mean? Get away yeah. from the kids, man. Because I don't know what America's been on lately. Bro. They, they've been on bro. some just, it's some, it, it, I ain't gonna lie, bro. It's fucking it's spooky It spooked me to even have kids, bro. I, I I'm not even going to hold you, bro. Like, I'm you, looking bro. at, my, my family is looking at me like I'm the only person in my family who don't have kids, no bro. shit, man. I have a lot of cousins. I, I don't have a lot of brothers and sisters. I only got one sister. But I have a huge family full of cousins yeah. with kids and shit. And they all got kids. And they all looking at me like, when you going to have? I was like, bro, never, bro. Yeah, Do you yeah, see yeah. what's going on? Like, And it's crazy because I've always been somewhat of a conspiracy theorist. You oh, know? me too. We can and go, I, we we go, go as deep we as you go deep. want. Yeah, all the way, all <laughs> the way to the reptilians, shit. baby. No, no, no. I don't get, but there's like yeah. some shit that's a little bit too much I understand, but um, there's just certain shit that I've been speaking on and, you, I, and I know I've been speaking on it because I go back into my, I get those Facebook memory. Yeah, yeah. And Facebook I'll look you what you and it reminds you what yeah. you was talking about. Yeah, bro. And it's crazy because I've had some of those Facebook reminders pop up and it'd be some shit that I posted in 07 or 2011 or wherever the fuck I posted it about fucking what's happening right now. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it's like, wow. Wow. I told you, motherfuckers. Yeah, and you bro. you thought I was a conspiracy theorist. thought I was crazy. And you thought I was crazy. And you thought yeah, I was... Man. It's like, bro, look at what's happening right now, bro. Look at everything that's going on with just the kids, the fucking... The, the, you can go from everything from the kids to the fucking... The, the, what's the... Global warming and the weather shit, the way, you yeah. know, the way the weather, like, what the fuck is happening in Hawaii right now, bro? How is Hawaii on fire? When have you ever heard about a fire happening in Hawaii? Mm. Never, bro. What's yeah. going on, bro? I don't believe it. Yeah. It's just like the world is acting crazy right it now, is, but it's bro. like, it's like, you've been fucking poisoning it for so long. It's only yeah. going to be it so long before itself, it's going to, exactly. My mother always told me the, the earth will cleanse itself it's going if to. it needs to. It's going to. Yeah, and then we're, we're, we're in that process right now, yeah. I feel like. I feel like there's a great cleanse coming yeah. because of everything. Man, you got aliens running around this motherfucker. Bro, there was just aliens like, in Sacramento the other day. I don't even know. Okay, I don't know what's up with the alien shit, but all I know is something's going. <laughs> How deep going, we going? Like, so deep we're going we go. deep, but look, I don't, like, Okay, the alien things I don't really subscribe to as much oh, because we're not doing aliens. I don't, it's not that I don't do it. It's just like certain things is like I gotta see to believe. I hear you. You know what I'm you. saying? So it's like so like, just this just in. There was a video, multiple videos of a flying saucer flying through SAC okay. with a fighter plane right behind it because you know we got McClellan Air Base over yeah. here. Okay, well I'm gonna and say was, before you, I'm gonna say to that there's just been lately, and I've just noticed this. Maybe you noticed it too. Mm -hmm. There's been an influx of 
UFO sightings. Yeah, because they're trying Abnormal, to hide shit. Like, they're trying to exactly. make us look over like, here. All of a sudden, like, look at, over we here. didn't hear yeah, about UFOs, UFOs yeah. for a They're good, like, you know what? We need them now. Let's blast We haven't heard about them for so off. long. And then all of a sudden, they're just back. They out here. And bro. they're just everywhere. And the Everyone's government's in them. now. The government's in now. Right. And you know I'm like, come on, bro. Like, what's going on? Like, it, it, it's, And now we have AI. Yeah. So bro. AI is going to be contributing to a lot yeah. of these videos. and So that's why it's like, it's hard to believe. But me, personally, like the same, I feel the same way about aliens the way I do about religion, bro. When I see the Lord, when I see the alien, yeah. we can talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until <laughs> then... Get the fuck out of here with that <laughs> bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear about that fucking 40 days, 40 nights shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect. Yeah, yeah, no But doubt. it's like, yeah, I got to see it to believe. I'm going to see it to believe it, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I don't, my, my, one of my good friends, Sean, always tell me, I don't believe it till I'm sitting on the toilet fucking with my money in my hand counting it. Then I'll believe it. Yeah. You know, when I'm counting the money, yeah. everything's gone good. All this fucking he say, she say, yeah, this, yeah, that, no the, I don't believe none of it till, till the deal's done. I and I'm counting you, the bread. <laughs> I feel you, bro. So no, I, I I fuck with that shit though. It's like, it's just crazy out here right now. It is crazy. It's bro. crazy, but I'm of I'm like I said, I've always had a good radar and compass to to navigate through it. And I'm like I said, I I, I feel like a lot of people are just susceptible to just the sheep syndrome. They just want to. They just go with what whatever's yeah. go with what whatever they say is is going and that's just what you do and it's like bro like i can never live like that i don't live like that bro i i I govern my own path and i do my own i've always been you know i'm on that just bob marley rebel rebel vibe like you know i can't conform it's a beautiful way of life it's beautiful bro and it's it's so so free free. bro god is it is it not like to just not like i i hear some of my friends wake up and just complain about some of the things that they complain about and i'm just like God, I'm so glad I don't have to subscribe to any of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just so checked out of that life and that, yeah. that way of thinking that there's no reason. Yeah, you know, like sure. I said, and that goes back to me never wanting to work for someone because that right there is what 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 will free you. Oh, that's a good what question. What will free you? I, I talked to some. I talked to a friend. I'm going back to Frisco this weekend. Yeah. And I talked to a friend who I hadn't, you know, seen in a couple years. And I just asked them, you know, what they've been up to. And it's just like, damn, bro. Like, they're just, like, trapped in the fucking work cycle. Mm-hmm. Just working, the working, rates. working to pay this fucking rent in Frisco that's so yeah. high. And it's just like, where damn, does it bro. End? I'm where like, does it bro, end? where did, like, literally. Like, I was calling you to where check and see end? if my boy had, what have you, what have you accomplished? What's yeah. been going on the last couple Where's years? Where's the glow up, baby? Where's the glow up? Yeah. You know, clearly I've gone way up. Yeah, like, yeah. Since I was sitting here it sucks. drinking beers with you in Frisco, it sucks you know, we outgrow friends. Bro. It sucks, it but sucks. I, you know, I don't want to. I don't. It's not your fault. It's not, but it, like I don't want to ever be that friend too that doesn't reach back out. No you doubt, know, like, there's I nothing always, wrong with that. I always Checking reach back out and just like try and like, yeah. like I do that a lot. You know, I do that a lot with men. Who? All my fucking, all my gang homies, bro. I could imagine. I bro. really, you, you know, got I a really lot of people do. You lost, bro. I I have, and and it's crazy, but it, it's crazy. Like I like I have one of my my one good homie, all red that I mentioned. He's a you know, he's a guy that I was really in the trenches with, bro. Yeah. Like when I say I'm talking about you know life or death, like yeah. that man was right next to me. Yeah. And got me out of some shit in my day. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't forever for Forever love that dude for that. Forever love that dude. Like he don't he he knows. He knows what he did and he knows, you know, I it's just Yeah, we're gonna speak he knows. On it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's all anything, said. anything he ever needs. Yeah. And the crazy part with him is like I watched his fucking glow up too. Like he went from just being one of the most wildest niggas on my block to boom, having four daughters. Holy shit. And fucking like, you know, he was escaping the gang life yeah. and going into the, you know, just going into being a father. Sure. He, got, he had his first daughter, and obviously that's a wake-up call, you know? You're yeah. still tied to the streets. Yeah. You've got the kid now. Mm-hmm. You know, you're trying to make that right. That adjustment. Right adjustment, yeah. you know, to make sure that she's good. And then it was just crazy because, you know, we kind of like went our separate ways, you know, and they stopped hanging out in the hood so much, and shit went down in the hood, so you couldn't really, we couldn't even really be over there like that no more. So it was like everyone kind of had to just go their separate ways. Sure. And then once we did that, like I said, I, I'd stay in contact with through the through the gram or whatever. But I would always peep my boy, you know, and I would always check in and look at his page. We wouldn't talk all the time, but I would see his page and I would just see him. Okay, got the got a second girl, 
you know, got a third of three girls. Like, oh, shit, yeah. you know? But then it's like, okay, I see my dude going to get his fucking CCW license. Okay, he's always we've always been gun fanatics. Yeah, now sure. let's fucking Still legally right. carry, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Going to get his fucking trucker's fucking license. Going oh, to get good, his, bro. you know, start his trucking company. <laughs> You know, that's the best get out the hood. Getting job, it, bro. getting into church, and shit, bro. Getting it. I would see my dude, you know, like Good on the him, gram, man. getting his fucking daughters all four, wild four girls, getting it's them all dressed up for church. To see that. Yeah, to see my nigga bro. who really, you know what I'm saying, was that's really for us growth, man. Right, right. So like, and I, it's crazy. I just, I just spoke with him the other day too. Oh, that's what's we, up, I man. called him the other day, and we just like just to, just to make sure everything was Gucci. You know, he's like. We just stay tapped in because he, he just, he tells me too, like they see me glowing back up again because this is like my third glow up in life. Sure. You know what sure, I'm saying? Sure. Like I glowed up at a young age. Yeah. Then I glowed up into a teenage. Then I, you know, with with, with my, my, my whole fucking uh, family and shit, their fucking craziness, yeah. they brought me through. And now I'm on my own like that. But that's what yeah. the beauty of uh, all that shit was, was like me just knowing that I had to use all that to find my own course, path. Man. You know? So. Cause you got you do come from a um, from an ill family like you, yeah. you know what I'm saying like we we had talked before you cousins with game and yeah. big yeah. face hunting you know what yeah. I'm saying those are some major players out there major what was it like players. coming up with them dudes man um, as your first cousins yeah those those, those, are, brothers, those right? are my first cousins they're sons of my uncle George who's yeah. my father's younger brother yeah so you know I I was you know around them everything that I talk about everything that I I'm telling stories about. These dudes was right there and could tell you the same stories because they was yeah. going through the same situations just with a different family member or do you know what I'm saying? But we sure. were always, you know, intertwined in this this whole eighties, you know, what 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 I like to look at is that um that that movie Minister Society, those scenes from when 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 Cade Kane was a little kid running around and his pops was like that, with the exception of the drug use like that, where the mom yeah. was all junkied out. But my house was like that. That's yeah. how, that's how, that's how my, my regular Friday, Saturday night was like that. Yeah, wow. It was my pops, my moms, having some people over, yep. 70s, 80s, vibey ass music, yeah. Marvin Gaye, you know, some yeah, cool yeah. ass shit. Yeah. Smoking cigarettes, drinking, probably smoking some weed. Yep. And you know, every now and then, my fucking my my uncle Game's father and my father would have a little too much to drink mm -hmm. and get to talking shit, and that brotherly fucking beefing would there start coming out, you know. And then yeah. my pops would always have to remind them who's big bro. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. And have to fucking g check the nigga. Yeah, but it would wow. just be it was always like you know, and it would be funny because like it got to the point where it was like okay, you know, pops and unk is at it again. Yeah, 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 you Here know, they go. Here but they how go. how how crazy yeah. is it gonna get this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. Like you know, we've had some crazy stories, bro. Like I'd have, wild, bro. you know, my pop, he, my uncle pull out the fucking meat cleaver on my pops at the dinner table type oh, of shit. You know, shit, bro. like we're getting gangster at dinner. Yeah, like, yeah, oh yeah. shit. Yeah, and my pops is a raging bull. Like you ain't letting no fucking man pull no knife on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No He's doubt. like, bro, in my house in front of my children. Yeah, yeah. Are you crazy? And yeah. these niggas just boom, it's two bulls start going oh at it, you know? It's God, like, bro. so it was like that fucking, that demo, or, or one of their homies, you know? Gambling, whatever, nigga, you know, shooting dice, dominoes, cards, all that shit, mm -hmm. you know? So we grew up on that, that 80s vibe, real, real light. And definitely, like I said, them being my older cousins, I was, you know, like, I would say Big Face Hunted, especially, he was like, to me, like of all my cousins, because I had Crip and Blood cousins that were like, yeah. you know. But to me, he was like always the one who carried himself with the most like manliness, okay, the most respect. Like, he like he he commanded respect, but he wasn't like a big nigga, you know. Like I'm a big nigga, my pops is a big nigga. Mm -hmm. You walk in the room, you just command a certain respect mm -hmm. based on your size. He's the type of dude that commands his respect just based off of his. Demeanor, street rep, you know, credibility, no and just the, the type of cool as <clears throat> individual he was. Always very cool, soft spoken, quiet, but you know, he has got the a, switch too. Got the switch too, yeah. and got a lot of you know a lot lot of respect in the street too. Sure. So like you know, ain't got ain't nothing to call a shot. No doubt, you know what I'm saying. No doubt, yeah, and get that shot fucking delivered. You yeah. know what I'm saying, no like doubt. Curry. So, like Curry. You know what I'm saying. Hell yeah. So it's uh, it was a, uh, it was always like you know. Like having them as like older cousins, like game two, he was my he was my you know like we were we're we're two years apart, 
Okay. So like we were closer to age. Sure. So like it was a lot of uh, me and him growing up uh, running to the liquor stores, you know, at the liquor store with the quarters playing Street Fighter Two. You know, oh, that yeah. was that was me and him. That's and then cool, like man. when we got to, um, we kind of got we were really close growing up. And then once my my grandma actually passed away, which is like kind of caused like a crazy like just disconnection of my family because yeah, I've seen that we life. had that yeah. we had that you know grandma's house was the sanctuary yeah the Christmases well, the New the, Year's the, and the Thanksgivings the and the, base. everything was there you know yeah. and there was so many memories there so like once she died you know and me and him were like we were at the age probably like 13 14 I was probably like 13 he was probably like 15 so like our grandma died and then we kind of like lost touch you know, okay. I didn't really see him for a few years. Sure. And then I didn't really see, I wasn't really, I wasn't really seeing a lot of my cousins at the time, you know, cause we were just yeah. all, everyone was distant. Now we're growing up and it's like, all right, cool. So when I got to the, um, I started going to college. It was funny. I started going to Cerritos college and I was playing, I was playing fucking, uh, football with all my Samoan niggas. And then he was there playing basketball. Oh, no shit. Right. But we didn't know that. Okay. I didn't know he was there. He didn't know I was there. Whatever, right? Yeah. So one day I'm at the football game, and this nigga, I just I'm with all my Samoan dudes, you know, like five big ass football playing ass niggas, and we're just chilling, watching the little like JV game or whatever. So we just watching the niggas, and then I keep seeing this dude walk back and forth, and every time he walks past me, he's like super like mad dogging me, you know, and I'm like. You know, we in L.A., like, that shit don't fucking fly. You don't even, like, mm -hmm. look at me, stare me down, like, two, three times. And then eventually I got to see, like, what the fuck, you know? Like, yeah. So the second time, third time I walk by him, I see him just dogging me. And now I'm, like, to the point where I'm, like, bro, who the fuck is this nigga? You know what I'm saying? But yeah. he's, he's grown now. He's tall. Oh, he's no got shit. facial hair. I'm fucking tall. I got facial hair and I got yeah. a big-ass fro. So I'm like, we didn't look the same, you know? No doubt. So then when I fucking, but then when we got close to each other, we were like getting ready to approach each other. Cause I was like walking by again and he was looking at me again. And I'm about to be like, hey brother, what the fuck? You know? But then when I got close to him, he looked and he realized it was me and I realized it was him. Oh, and I was shit. like, oh shit. And then we just hugged it out right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was crazy. That's a trip, you dude. You know? So it was crazy. I'm like, damn nigga, like what the fuck? Like, I didn't know. I didn't think that was you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all of a sudden it was like, so then I catch back up with him. And it was like, him and Face are living in an apartment around the corner from the school mm -hmm. where they just trapping. Yeah. Trapping, trapping, trapping. Is that trapping. the one The one where he got shot at? Yeah. Because I remember so, he did the video where so he walked through the apartments. That's where, yeah, the yeah, Sherwood apartments. Okay. So yeah, that's yeah. what we was fucking, we was, I was literally, once I became, once I reconnected with him, he was yeah. like, come through. No I'm doubt. over here. So I'm like, bet. So I'd be at the Sherwood Apartments all the time. Boom, 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 coming through, sliding, you know. And it was crazy because that's my older cousin, you yeah. know. And it was like always like he was that couple years older than me. Sure. Had a little bit more experience in go. life, yeah. you know. Not too much, but enough. And so when I go to his crib, it was like the first time I seen a trap apartment. The mm. first time I walked in, nigga, 80-inch fucking big screen. Fucking mm -hmm. Belvedere bottles on the fucking mm -hmm. TV. Fucking Jordans across the fucking everywhere, yeah, yeah. you know, everywhere in the fucking house, yeah. you know, like Hell packs yeah. of weed everywhere. No doubt. Niggas busting down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like 10 All niggas the in the fucking house, straps on the table. You know, I'm like, Your oh shit, shit. Yeah. like this shit is crazy. Super active. You niggas are active over <laughs> Super here. Super active. Know? And there's like Crips outside. Yeah. So I'm like, whoa. <laughs> whoa, buddy. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? So when I really got in uh, locked in with him, you know, we I'm there. And I'm going now. I'm at school. I'm going to you know after school. Go pick up weed. Go smoke there before I go to class. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then that night he gets shot. So when he gets oh, shot, shit. You seen him that day? I I seen him earlier Fuck, earlier bro. in the day. So because he was you know we was doing our thing, going to school, sure. smoking, whatever, whatever. Then he does you know he gets shot later that night. So I didn't even know it had happened till like because it wasn't, this was before social media, before all of the, course, you know, so it was like cell phones, but it wasn't like how it is now. No doubt. You know, so the news was like, I got the news probably like a few days later that he got shot. And then like, I was like, damn, like what the fuck? Like I didn't, I just lost touch with him again. Cause you know, his phone was off. Yeah. The number that I just got from, you know, we had been rocking maybe like, like six months at the apartment since I, previous to him getting shot. So then once I, you know, I, I lost track of him again, 
I kind of just like, fuck, I didn't really know, you know, what it, what had happened or what he was doing. And then one of my boys told me that he had been rapping. And then I talked to Face, and then Face had told me, like, yeah, he's recovering. He's just, you know, laid up right now, but he's been, you know, working on rapping because he can't really, he was playing ball, but she get fuck shot five up. times, you're not going to play ball no more, fuck you know? Him so, up. yeah. So he was like, yeah, going through that shit. And then, yeah, now he came out of that. And was just like, fuck it, doing the rap thing. No know? shit, man. And, but he sat down, like the recovery time from the healing process is what caused him to go into the whole, you know, like, let's focus on these bars. No shit, and You ain't man. got nothing to do but sit there and recover. No doubt. You know, I know about that, you know. No doubt, no you doubt. Know, it's crazy. And that's what I used to get mad at, too, is I would be like, it would be like homies in the hood getting shot three, four, five times, and they'd be back on the block. Yeah. You know, three months, four months. Here I am taking two years to fully recover like you know yeah. i had to go to physical therapy and shit i mean a lot of my niggas yeah. did too but getting hit by the car like my whole shit it took me it was a three-year process to fully recover fully, from that yeah. shit you know where i'm seeing dudes get shot and be back on the street three months yeah. they back at it you know wild, bro. i'm over here like damn bro i want to get back in but my arms fucked up i have my my whole shit because like i had this fucking mean ass cast on you had the l cast and I had on the L, so my shit was stuck like this yeah. and i had to go get it and work the hand back out and snap my eventually snap my elbow which was probably one of the worst pains Ooh, you know like it was like it was like all that fucking dry muscle that's the, the muscle that just got stiff and it's like you're you're trying to work it to extend yeah. it to extend it and then finally they just gotta pop Ooh. and they'll pop it back oh, in you know bro. when they did that i was like it was like all that skin that just been yeah, you know, growing around Ooh. the bone. You're like, ah, I gotta rip that shit real quick, you know? Yeah, bro. That was like my little one of my little ill tests of manhood. That's a trip, to think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crossing the bridge right there. Yeah, bro. Oh, that shit hurt. I Fuck. still think about that. I ain't gonna lie. That's wild, bro. Yeah, man. We gonna take a real quick little break. Oh yeah, commercial break. What's up, guys? Just want to take a quick second to shout out my sponsors over at Grove Bags. Listen, Grove Bags are hands down the best way to store your cannabis. Forget jars, forget mylars. Nobody does it like Grove Bags. Listen, it's a six layer, non static bag. State of the art technology. It's going to keep your weed fresher for longer. It keeps your cannabis between 58 and 62% humidity at all times, the optimal humidity to store cannabis. It's gonna increase your shelf life, help prevent mold, weight reduction. Hands down, it's the best product out there. We don't use anything but Grove Bags of Good Pizza. And especially if your product is in stores, we all know there's some shelf life issues at the stores. This is gonna keep your product lasting longer on those shelves. So when your customer goes to try it, it's gonna be fresh cannabis. Listen, if you wanna store your cannabis the proper way, use Grove Bags. Use promo code PIZZA with three Z's. That's P-I-Z-Z-Z-A. Tell them good pizza sent you. So, yeah, so um, so game's rapping So, now. yeah, so after that, he, um, yeah, he starts rapping. You know, we're going crazy. Like, he's going crazy. He's got, a, like, a mixtape out. I think he came to the Bay Area, started rapping with that JT, the bigger figure dude, recording some Another shit out there. You know, so that's what the shit kind of got it started getting interesting. You know, I started hearing the music and I heard his first mixtape and it was decent. It wasn't great. It, you know, had had a little, you know, L.A. sound to it, but it wasn't overall great, you know? Yeah. And then I remember one day, like, I had the mixtape and I was playing it for some people and passing it out to some people. And I remember one of my boys from New York, one of my Puerto Rican dudes, he called me one day and this was crazy because he's, it wasn't even like a phone call. It was on the Nextel chirp. He next tell chirps me, bloop, bloop. yo, bro, I got this mixtape. I got this mixtape. Like, I think your cousin's on it. I think your cousin's on it. This is right when 50, 50 had just dropped with the whole uh, Wankster yeah. you know, in the club was just about to come out. You know, Wankster was hot in the street, yeah. though. So it was like right at that time, like remember 2002, that. Three, yeah, Remember that summer, yeah. You know, so yeah, summer, that, it was crazy. Wankster was had in the streets going crazy. Crazy. You know, so I was like, yo, and then my boy was like telling me, he's like, it's a G Unit mixtape. It's a G Unit mixtape. Like, your cousin's on it. It just says on the back, it says Game Freestyle. And he's trying to play it for me over the fucking next right, 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 right. You know, that's not like happening. complete dog yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, you know, so I'm just like, bro, I can't hear shit. I'm going to mail that shit to me. Yeah. So he mails it to me and he mails it to me and fucking, boom, I listen to that shit. It's sure enough, it's him. But he's on the fucking shit talking about Compton's back. You know, I got Dre with me. And I'm just oh, like, what? Shit. Compton's back. It got Dre with me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, Dre, I'm like, what fucking 
Dre is he talking about? I'm yeah. like, not Dr. Dre, you know? <laughs> no doubt. So now I'm like listening more and this nigga's like, you know, you know, I'm right on the block where Dre found me. You know, I'm like, he said it again and I'm like, what? Like, no fucking way. Right. So I started like reaching out to my family members trying to get me his number because they didn't have his number anymore. He changed his shit. Fucking get this nigga's number. He's like, bro. And it was crazy because I just got my first whip. I had a fucking, I bought a brand new, not brand new, but I bought a, a, a Capri, 91 Capri's Classic Ooh, nice. off a cop. You know, that was my, off a detective. Those were fire back so it was in a the fucking, day, like 50,000 miles on it. I got it for like 3,000 bucks, bro, off a, off a retired, like, lieutenant who used to just drive it to the office and back, mm -hmm. you know? So, like, I, it had the turbo fucking Camaro, turbo Corvette engine Damn and shit, right. all that shit. Had the light? So, yeah, had, had the, the light. light. Yeah. Oh, I used to fuck niggas up with the light. So, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, it was funny because when I finally reconnected with Game, I remember he pulled up on me at my crib. And he pulled up, and I'm sitting there. I hadn't seen him, like, since before he got shot. So he pulled up on me, and he, he pulls the bins the corner in the same fucking car. Same color and everything. Oh, no shit. White Caprice Classic. Only difference was his had a fucking navy blue interior. Mine had the burgundy interior. No so shit. So I'm like, damn, I'm on there. We really fucking out here Caprice boys. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember that day. Like, we sat there on my fucking mom's fucking driveway, and just he just told me, he's like, bro, he's like, we about to go travel the world, bro. And I was just like... I didn't really know what to say, you know? I was like, I kind of like, was like, bet, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but then in my mind, I was kind of like, is this real? Like, is this fucking real? But then I'm like, oh, he's rapping with Dre? Like, you talking about Dre? So I'm like, all right, well. So sure enough, the motherfucking Dre shit pops off, like it's real. And I'm like, oh Damn, shit, the motherfucking, bro. like really like, you start seeing it, you start seeing the billboards going up in the hoods, and you start seeing all the fucking promotion and aftermath this, and. And I'm like, oh shit. So I'm working at this time, I'm working at a little strip club, you know? I'm doing bodyguard work at a strip club, yeah. you know, checking niggas at the door, walking bitches to the car or whatever. So, but I'm like seeing this shit, these dudes that work at the strip club that are like lifers, they're like, they've been working there 10 years, you know? Mm -hmm. Working at the strip club. Yeah. Just, that's all they do. You know what I'm saying? So. They, they think they're dripped out, they're the flyest bodyguard at the strip club. Yeah. yeah or whatever, yeah. you know? So I'm like, I'm like, I'll be damned if I'm gonna end yeah, up like bro. these fucking niggas yeah. right here, bro. And I would like, they used to always like laugh at me because I would like make fun of these niggas because they would be all out here pulling up their low riders and shit. I'm like, nigga, you brought your low rider to work? Mm. Like, bro, at the strip club, bro? I'm like, no one gives a fuck about yeah. that, you know? And like, because I'm coming from the real low riders, like, nigga, my, my OG's got switches and they pulling yeah. shit out on Sunday, you know? Yeah, we yeah. hitting switches, nigga. We on Crenshaw, all type uh -huh. of shit. And I lived in Whittier. So I'd be with the SAs too in Whittier Boulevard. I cruised both boulevards growing up. Okay. Whittier and Crenshaw. So nigga, you couldn't tell me about no low riders. No doubt. The niggas pulling up with their little busted ass shit and got one little pump on it, nigga. Barely go. I'm like, bro, <laughs> that baby fucking hydraulic shit the oh, fuck out of here, you know? So I'd be like roasting these niggas. And then like, I would be coming to the, like, coming, to, I remember, like, one day I was, like, telling, like, bro, you niggas fucking swear, bro. I'm all, I can't wait to get the fuck out of here and just come back in 10 years and see you niggas still right here. And they was yeah. be, like, boy, you crazy. You finna be working right here with us and all this mm -hmm. shit. And it was crazy because, like, that week, like, Vibe Magazine had dropped the fucking, a, like, magazine cover with, like, all the new artists coming out. And it was, like, Game and, like, Jewel Santana and yeah, all these niggas, that. you know? Remember that. And Game's on the cover with the fucking, with the fucking... 2004 or 2000 like all star fucking LA jersey that year so it was crazy and all I'm at, I'm at work reading the magazine like you bitch ass niggas I'm as soon as this album uh -huh. drops I'm gone I'm nigga. Out, I'm bro. out bro like I couldn't wait and I swear to God that nigga fucking hit me like yo call me one day bro come to come to the hood pack your bags we finna go to we going we flying out tonight and I'm like what damn I had a house bro. full of people bro I'm trapping mm -hmm. fucking. I got three hours to get ready for my first flight ever. First flight. Oh, no never been shit, on an airplane. Man. You know what I'm saying? Damn. I was like, oh shit. And sure enough, it was lit from that moment on. Like, but it was crazy because he. That's when I say when I say I, I I've had a resurgence. Like I've had I've been turned up so many times. So yeah. like this was like my time. Like all right, I'd already been you know turned up through the sports shit as a kid, through all the other shit being just lit as a fucking kid through in L. A. And then now it's like okay, we're gonna take this show on the fucking road. That's fire. We're going to take this show on the road, paid for by Aftermath Entertainment, Psh, Interscope. 
Come on, bro. let's go, bro. Come on. So it was like I got to travel the world and see the world at 20 years old. Go with around the crew. with the crew, cool. VIP everything. Didn't pay for shit. Wow. Never popped and never paid for. I was. Like, I don't understand these niggas is popping, paying to pop. I, I've never, I've never paid for a bottle, bro. No bottle shit, service, bro. brother. That shit is like. I don't know what what that is. What that's about. Yeah. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we just come from that life where just bottles just be there. You know. What yeah. I'm saying? Right. Like, bottles are just there when we get there. You know. Wow. Not, no, bro. like. No buying bottles or scheduling or putting in with the homies to get the bottle. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Shout out to the put in boys. <laughs> <laughs> Pony up boys. The put in boys, uh-huh. you know. But uh yeah, no, it's it, it was just always like some some just live shit, you know. And just Damn, like that's cool, man. Coming coming from that that's cool you coming from that out. life got me prepared for this. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Cause it's like like yeah. I said, I was always fully fully uh appreciative and fully engaged in everything that he had me doing as far as traveling and turning up my trap. I'm meeting people in other parts of the world now. Mm. And it was crazy because that was vital for me. Always making a friend everywhere I went. Yeah. Because every time I'd stop somewhere, I'd meet someone, I'd have an interaction with someone. But like I said, this was pre-social media. This sure. was Nextels. This was just in the beginning of Sidekick 2s. Okay, I got you. So got Sidekick 2s, yeah, yeah, yeah. AOL Instant Messenger. AOL Instant Messenger, I make yeah. a friend in fucking D.C. Cool, add me on AIM. Yeah, yeah. That was the first way handle. you could. That you was could your first just, handle. You your first out. handle. You could just yeah, uh, uh, and we could communicate quickly. Yeah, you know. So then it was like, all right, I make these little fucking. What was your aim name? My aim name was Relly BWS. I was PS3 Peasy. <laughs> yeah, because that's a Relly. Relly's my nickname in the hood. That's Relly? What, that, uh, that's what. That's short that was for. was Peasy. Yeah. yeah. Nah, it's just short for relative. So instead of cousin, we say relative. So niggas just call me Relly. And then oh, okay. BWS is Black Wall Street. So, oh, for sure, for yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. So it'd be it's usually your name and your crew. <laughs> yeah, it's my name and your crew. That's it. No you know, doubt, that was. No you know, I didn't have all that weirdo shit. You know, yeah. you know happy fucking stoner four two zero and all. That. <laughs> Shout out to whoever that was because hey, you know you out there. Happy stoners doing numbers right now. <laughs> oh shit! No, nah, it's lit though. But yeah, no, nah, that was a um. That was very vital for me, making friends everywhere you go, Good networking. Bro. And then because it, it that that paid so much dividends though, like. Years later, when I think about it, when I actually did get the social media and I did have all this shit because it's like, you know how you, you stay in contact with people, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then when once the social media came out, it was like it became that much easier to connect. Yes. So meanwhile, I'm still traveling, but now I'm not traveling so much with him. I'm I've. I went around the country with him so much and got to uh, learn life. Yeah. I learned how to travel. I learned how to make the moves from the hotels and this and that. You know, how to do sure, the adult man. shit. How to move. How to go, you know, who to how to have your dude right there with the thing ready for you when you touch down. You yeah. know, like all these little fucking things that you just need to be okay when you when you're on the road. So once I learned that and I knew I'm like, okay, I can go do this on my own now. You know, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm now I'm not twenty anymore. I'm twenty five, mm-hmm. twenty six you know, approaching 30 and I'm doing this on my own. Now I've got my own trap. I'm doing my own thing, but I'm still not Zach Woods by any stretch yet. That's still sure. 10 years away, but I'm still, I know how to move and shake out here. Mm-hmm. You know, I can, and that from, from what that became, you know, international travels. And, you know, like I said, I, I was blessed to do that with him too. I got to leave the country and oh, no see shit, Europe man. and see all these different places with him. So, when I fully fully got done with the whole like rap stuff, you know, because that was like it, for me, it was like it wasn't like short lived. It was like a good ten year run from oh, like two thousand big chapter, bro. Yeah, from two thousand and three when the whole Dre shit started yeah. to like probably about twenty thirteen is twenty ten twenty thirteen is like twenty twelve twenty thirteen is when I probably started getting out of the the rap stuff, and I actually was kind of like. Just growing out of it, you know? No doubt. The shootings, the fucking, the always having to be on defense and just, yeah. you know, there's a lot of drama that comes with the no rap doubt. life, you know what it I'm saying? It really does, bro. So at that time, I had a fucking, you know, uh, one of my cousins fucking just got fucking, he had to, he ended up getting drafted to the NBA, to the, to the what you call it, Timberwolves. No shit, So he went, once, once he, so now my life kind of pivots again to, Mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm not with the rap shit scene no much so as much anymore. I'm more so on the 
on NBA. the NBA sports scene. You know, I had mm-hmm. another cousin that was playing for the Bengals at the time, Cincinnati Bengals. So Damn, I had bro. one cousin in a the challenging NBA, family, my friend. One cousin in the, you know, we're out here moving around, doing our thing. I'm tapping in with everyone. I'm going to games. I'm going to like I'm fully Bengals fan, even though I'm a Raiders fan. I'm no doubt. going to Bengals games like their home games. Um, you know, going to my cousin's games out in Minnesota and then he actually came and played for SAC for a couple of years too. So that was actually the last time I was in SAC. Now that I think about it, last time I was in SAC was when my boy was on the on the, the Kings and, you know, it was good to be back. I was like, I came back, I was like, I gotta go get me a Kings hat. You feel me? Go get me a little J Dub T shirt. You know what I'm saying? Support the God. That's cool, bro. But yeah, no, it was a, a being well traveled at a young age. And living that Hollywood rap life, definitely, I think, you know, it, it just gets you well, ready first, for life. Bro. It gets Very you ready well for life because, yeah. you, you know, like a lot of people don't understand, like it gets you ready for life. But, too, it also opens your eyes to life because a lot of like you travel, it bro. goes it goes full circle with, with what I've already been feeling. What I already mentioned earlier about me not feeling the life of getting up and going to work for someone, always being able to get up and freely go where I want to go. If I want to get up and leave, book a flight, take a road mm-hmm. trip, wherever, I've never had to like ask anyone check or tell anybody, anyone yeah. or check in with nobody, you know. So it's like that shit is just a, it's a very, you know, like I said, it's a free feeling, man. And like when you do it young, it just makes you because a lot of people haven't done it still. A lot of yeah. people are 30, 35, 40 years old haven't been anywhere. Yeah, that's you true. know, and they're that's just true. stuck in their life, bro. And for me, it's like, damn, I feel so bad for these people because you know what's about to happen. They're about to hit them crucial years where that's going to be it. You know, your window, yeah. your window to, to live life is, you know, it's short. Smaller. But you got to, you know, you got to, you got to utilize that shit. That you stays know? behind you. And it doesn't matter, like, you know, it. I don't want to fucking sit here and tell people like, oh, you have kids, you can't do it. Because I know, I know fucking people who got kids and be having their kids out on the fucking hikes and taking travel and good mm-hmm. kids got the little Columbia fit with the little, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Little hiking boots and all this shit. Yep. So, I know plenty of people who take their kids right along and, and, and live that life and still, you know, yeah, it might be a little bit more pricey because you got to yeah. pay for them fucking seats and shit like that, you know, yeah. and but they still do it. You know, the fact is, is like you can't ever just just pack it up and just, yeah, you know, true. I feel like a lot of people just pack it up. We live through guys like you, bro. Right, We need guys like you. But you're, but you're living, bro. Like, like I'm doing. I'm you're doing, doing yeah, great, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, oh, shit, I don't want to, like, the, I appreciate that because no, I, no. I would expect my my single single men, I mean, my, my, my fathers who, go, who are not able yeah. to, like, you know, were watching me. There's a piece of us that's like, yeah, man, man, man I wish I could. fun, yeah, bro. Fuck. Yeah, because I know, because you're, you're tied to the responsibility. I got to check and it. I, yeah, I got to plan that, shit. But, but that's part of being a man, too, bro. No, no. Like, that's, 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 when you make that decision and that commitment to, you know, to have, bring a life into this world, bro, that's, that's something you got to wake up and deal with every day. And yeah. if you don't want your daughter on the fucking pole in fucking 20 years, you got to be there every yeah. day, bro. And yeah, be there with the fact. fucking strong hand. You know yeah, what I mean? Bro. So yeah, bro. I appreciate the dudes that are there. Like, you know why I really appreciate it? Because I have a younger sister, bro. And my sister, all my life, like when I was coming up, I was fearful, you know, because I'm 16, she was 13. You know, sure. so I was like thinking like all the time, I'm going to have to get ready to start whooping niggas ass. Yeah. Like, because here come the dudes and here comes all the fucking problems. And But man, my sister was so just... I don't want to say she was, maybe it was cause she was raised perfectly, but she didn't give me no problems, bro. No guy no problems. Wow. None. She dated one. The only thing she did that we we had an issue with was she had a baby young. Okay. You know, she had the baby. She was pregnant. Like, it's not hard to She do. found out she was pregnant, like, the last, like, month of school. You mm-hmm. know, so she was getting ready to graduate, and then she had my, my nephew. But... The dude was a stand-up dude. Okay. So Good. I didn't have to worry, you know. Good. The dude was there checking in, knocking at my door, making sure, you know, everything was Gucci as soon as we okay. found out the news. All right, cool. My little man was born. My my dude was right there. Every fucking my, my nephew never wanted for nothing. That's so. cool, bro. Bless. That's why I was like, all right, bet. You know, like, and then they ended up, like, they didn't stay together. But then, you know, years went on. My sister didn't really date anyone through that time she was just raising my nephew and then she finally met another dude who (laughs) this is funny actually because i never had any problems with none of the you know none of the dudes but like she felt like she had to like 
I don't know. I just saw this dude coming around. You know, we're both living at mom's crib at mm-hmm. the time. I see this dude coming around. I'm trapping heavy. Mm-hmm. I'm in and out the house. I'm fucking moving money. I got packs coming in and out, bitches coming in and out, niggas coming in and out, all types of shit going yeah. on at the crib. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't really got time for whatever the fuck little shit you got going on. Yes, yeah, so sure. It's, it's minor. Yeah, 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 no doubt, no doubt. But I keep seeing this motherfucker coming around, you know? And I'm like, all right, that's a little dude. They're probably talking whatever. I don't pay yeah. it no mind. One day, I come home and I bought... I just bought a brand new fucking bottle of fucking Old Spice High Endurance, you know, this mm-hmm. fucking body wash. Yeah. That was the shit at the time. So I'm over here, you know, I just bought the shit, put it in the fucking bathroom, and I had to, like, leave town for a couple of days. Leave town for a couple of days, and I come back to the crib. I'm going to fucking body wash a little bit light. Mm, I saw this coming. Especially a little bit light for a motherfucker who just bought it. And I know yeah. I just bought it and I know I ain't used it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only motherfucker else that could use it is this motherfucker, my little nephew, who's five years old at the time. And they ain't using no old And that nigga ain't using it unless he's yeah. just in there with the bottle, like <laughs> yeah, being yeah. a complete being a kid, jerk off. Yeah. <laughs> which that. I could understand that too. No but doubt. I, you know, so but I pressed him about it. I'm like, hey, you fucking with my my He's like, no, I'll go like no. I'm like, okay. I know what the yeah. fuck's going on now. Yeah. Now this nigga's over here staying uh-huh. the night on the low, uh-huh. using the body use wash, my using my soap now. Hold on now. Bold. <laughs> yeah, bro. Bold way to make the introduction yeah. to Big Bro. Yeah. Crazy Big Bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, no doubt. I was like, this nigga bold. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it kept happening, bro. Till finally one day so I was- it kept getting lower and lower? It kept getting lower, bro. And then I think one bitch. day I came and it was empty, bro. And I was, smoked the bottle. I was, he smoked the bottle. Bro. Damn, son. I was so fucking hot, bro. Because I'm over here, you know, I'm in trap mode, bro. Fucking Old Spice, $6 at the time. I'm like, hey, bro, this motherfucking $6 and I didn't use one drop of the shit. Or I used one drop of the shit and the shit's gone. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, <laughs> come on. I was getting on my mom. I'm getting on my I'm getting on everyone but this nigga because I don't even, haven't even formally met this nigga yet. Okay. So I'm just like, bro. You got one more fucking time. Like I told my sister, I'm like, this nigga got one more time, bro. One more squirt. One it's more over. fucking squirt. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, I know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. I know the nigga's staying here. I see the car. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, don't fucking make it a problem if that don't need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go get your own fucking soap. Nigga. You feel me? <laughs> so <laughs> that was the only problem. My okay, sister okay, good, cool, cool. The soap issue. I was waiting for him to get up for the for the grand finale. Okay, so nah. he, he's cool. No, nah, he's cool. And okay. then they ended up having two kids, oh, both my is... little nieces. Oh no shit! Same They're guy. married Got now. It. He married her, and then yeah. Now you guys break balls about the story. I'm oh, sure. Oh yeah, we break balls all day. It's funny. Did he ever get you like a a, a bottle of Old Spice for Christmas <laughs> or some joke shit? <laughs> Oh, that would be great. That I don't think great. he did, but he's definitely he's definitely made up for the bottle since then. Okay. So I'll definitely give cool. him that. Cool. That shit was funny though. You just wake up to a bottle of old spice. That's funny. Cause that yeah, it was it was it had me so hot, bro. You know, you just imagine your fucking fucking little sister's yeah, fucking man. You don't like those little hints that things are happening. Bro. Yeah, you know. And then it's like, okay, so you're staying the night. So what what else is going on? What's going on, you're man? You're staying the night at my house, banging my sister and using my soap. Taking showers. Get, taking like, showers my in, my, in my bathroom. You know what you just did, bro. Right. Like, Ugh. You know, like, what are you doing? Without yeah. having to talk first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, like, the crazy part was they didn't, like, he didn't, like, they never, like, introduced him to me or nothing. Okay. I was just like, this motherfucker's just in my house. But they're like, he's in my house, but not trying to see me. Like, trying yeah, to, sneaky. Not trying to sneaky, but he's just like, they're, and I'm moving a million miles a minute. Yeah, yeah. So I'm in and out this motherfucker, and they're just trying to make sure he's in when I'm out. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? sounds like there's it. no. I see the pattern. Cross paths going yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, no doubt. I, I didn't really ever see him coming in and out the crib. I would just see the fucking soap missing. Yeah. And be like, what the fuck? This shit this is not adding guy. up. You know what I mean? This fucking guy. <laughs> like, go That's this crazy, bro. No, nah, but it ended up being fucking cool ass dude. And he That's takes really up, good man. care of my sister. I good, love him bro. to death, you know, so it's all good now. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. It's like you said, growth. Yeah. You don't growth, you don't ever want to not see that. So it's a good vibe family vibes you know i just yeah, left man. them there in vegas now so oh it's cool man i was out there at champs last week two weeks ago and check out the champ show how was that bro i should it I was lit fucking went bro it was lit it's uh for me like i said it wasn't a, um it wasn't the greatest like as far as the cannabis branding i feel yeah. like it's leaning more towards the uh tobacco and shit the tobacco and the vapes and stuff yeah but it was a great networking experience so yeah. 
You know, I'm out there. I got That's the trap box. Go I got a fucking, you know, I, got, I, I was out there doing my thing. You bumped into who? Uh, I bumped into Tech a lot Nine. of people. Tech Nine. You did a video with Tech Nine, right? Uh, not Tech Nine. Uh, Dub C? Spice One. Spice One. Spice, Spice One. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I bumped into Spice One. That's we cool. were smoking. That's legend. Let him swim in the trap box. Bay Area legend, you know. So yeah. really, he was in, just amazed by everything, you know, especially when he seen the Oakland shout out and the tribute like we have oh, yeah. right here for the Grandy dude. So oh yeah, I was like, yeah, man. Like, you know, he, Fire. people a lot. Of, a lot of people, see, you know, big big people, whether they're famous or not, they see the box. They want you know, they want to work. They want to. Yeah. They want to know more. They want to know how they can get their own box. So, you yeah. know what what needs to be done. And I'd be like, you know, hey, money yeah. money talks loudest, baby. But you know, if yeah. you want to, you know, if you're especially if you're in this cannabis scene or if you're in the space and you want to do some branding shit, you know, like I'm always available. How right. does one lock in with a trap box? So since we're on the subject, I mean, we're gonna have to jump back to when yeah, Zach yeah. was born and all that. Yeah, but I'm for curious. Sure. I mean, just for 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 branding purposes. I mean, like I I usually charge. You know, I'm not whacking dudes over the head. Like you know, there, there was a time when people were charging the whole doing the whole stamp 50k and all that shit like that. But yeah, you know, like for me, I I, I try and keep it fair. You know what I'm saying? Like I figure like the artwork itself is gonna cost. Anywhere, if we're gonna talk about the artwork for the box, like this right here, I ch my guy charges three thousand, okay. you know, just to do the art. But this is like Things some crazy it, shit, you know. You put your yeah. whole life on the box, so yeah. you know, three thousand for that. Probably, you know, what I'm saying like you're looking at probably like ten k just in like if we're gonna build your brand out. Yeah. Box design, packaging, mm -hmm. bags, mylar bags, trays, the whole fucking thing. You're looking at ten k probably right there. Yeah. And then I would say like just for my fee, just for you know putting it all together. So I'd, I'd say like 10k on top of that yeah. too. So usually like 20k well, 20 for, a, for a whole brand build out. You know what I'm no saying? Doubt. And I do no do. Doubt. I've done that for a couple guys already. My boy Rich That's Baby cool, Exotics, man. a couple other you know people. The Only Grams dude, um, couple bust down organics. I got out there in DC. We built them out, and you know. So, oh, that's tight, bro. Yeah, we just try and do. I got their bag right over there too, by the way. That's fucking so, brilliant. Man. Yeah, we just, you know, we, I, I know people see the shit and they want to, you know, because I feel like a lot of people have good ideas or have ideas, maybe not good ideas, but have ideas and what they want to, you know, but it's just how you go about putting it out. Yeah. You know, like a lot of people get good ideas and run to the print shop and pay for the printing and, you mm -hmm. know, they go through all this shit. And you know, I'm just like a harsh like critic, you know? Yeah. You call it what you want. I'm from LA. It's like we we don't we just give props like, you know, it's gotta be dope. Yeah. It's gotta be dope. If it's yeah. not dope, I'm not gonna sit here and gas you like, oh that's dope. Like, nah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like dope. you have a lot of these dudes who do that, uh they you know, they're like rappers and shit. They go out here and they go, Oh, we got this make a track and they're doing all this shit, but no one's pulled them to the side and said, like, Hey bro, that's whack. You know what I'm saying? Or, hey, bro, that, that could be better. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Not, that it's, yes not, that, about not that it's so much whack, but it, it could be better. You know? So, like, my whole thing is, like, let's let's make sure we don't ever have that yeah. situation where we put you, we're going to print something and put it out to the world and have the world saying, oh, I could be better. Yeah, yeah. It's dope, but, it, you know? No. Nah. I want people to see your shit and be like, I've never had anyone see one of these boxes and be like, oh, no, that's... That's whack. Shit's kind of weak, bro. Shit's kind of weak, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no it doubt. just doesn't happen. So, you know, the big, but it's because of the you heart. You you put a lot into it. Yeah, bro. the that heart, soul, detail, every fucking thing. Like I said, if you really get into the fucking, the the real fucking zooming in, it really what you got to do is just smoke a blunt and just kind of look at the box. Yeah, the watch more you The more you look at it, the, you're going to see different things. You're not going to realize, like, this is a big tribute to Oakland right here. So, you know, we got the Bay Bridge. Yeah. Obviously, we got the BART sign. We got the BART passing through, the Welcome yeah. to Oakland sign. You know, the helicopters, of course, you know, flying Get through, you birds. know, patrolling. Yeah. And just little just little remnants of Cali, yeah, everything that cool, just bro. supports the the – the city, the lifestyle, the actual brand, Two Grandy Flora, all their strains, and mm -hmm. you know everything that that coincides with what they're doing. We call it life on a canvas. So basically, we take their whole life, put it on the canvas. You know, you hit them with the hit them with the Zach Woods exclusive drip, like it says Zach Woods yeah, exclusive me. right there. Yeah, you know, put it put it together, and basically, it's a fusion it's of fire, me, bro. my brother Devin Almarinez, the artist, and whatever brand we're working nice, with. So bro. we've been blessed to be able to bring some to. Do some fire claps. Stevie Williams, we got one with uh, Grandy. That crazy. Got one with Sherbinsky, Champelli, 
you know, boogie bags. So we got yeah. a couple couple key players in the game who got got their own trap boxes, you know. Yeah. It was actually cool. I had an event out in Houston um, this past weekend with Grandy Flora and with my boys over at Foreign Genetics. And we had all three of our tables were set up. So it was like Zach was Foreign, Grandy on the side. And all three, you know, they got the squints boxes. And then Grandy got the Grandy boxes, you know. And mm -hmm. then I had, like, a display of, like, all the boxes. So it was, like, everyone that walked up, they just seen, like, damn, hella trap boxes. Mm -hmm. Like, all the brands had them. Like, we're all fucking rocking our own shit. So That's fire. It's dope. You know, it's That's dope. It's a cool wave you started, bro. Yeah, you know, it's just, like, for me, I was just tired of the pound bag so much. Like, the pound bag never holds 64 sevens. And everyone, yeah. I, like, for that always bothered me. You know, I'm a fucking details guy. So it's, like, yeah. it's got to fit. Everything's got to fit. And, like... I just saw everyone walking around with pound bags and pound bags of this and that. And it's like, bro, like, you can't even sell the whole pound in that bag. Like, yeah. I have to give them 58, 54 bags and then 12 on the side. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 no like, doubt. Or if you're doing eights, it's way too much, you know? Oh, so yeah, way forget about too it. much. So I just wanted to come with something that was just, like, you know, fit the pound. And once I saw a sticker farmer, you know, doing their thing over there, and I realized, like, okay – I got one from them because they gave me like a display one. And then um, I just was using it for tree, just putting the sevens in there, just kind of like throwing them in there. But then yeah. one day I was like, you know what? Let me stack them up, stack them up and see if I can fit a whole P in there. And sure enough, they 64 fit perfectly. So oh, once shit. I did that, I was like, okay, now we're going to have our own design, you know? And that's when yeah. I really had the the original trap box, which was uh, a, a Saved by the Bell, like rip with that, Blue confetti yep. look in the background. Yep, I remember you that. Know? I remember so that. So that was the first and you sign one. Sign them and shit. One yeah. of yeah. X. You know one of saying? yeah. We're at fucking. Uh, yeah, what are you up? What are you up to now? We're at actually three eighty nine. No, actually, wow. oddly enough, I was out of town yesterday. So no, it is three eighty. No, it is three eighty nine. Yeah, three eighty eight got picked up yesterday. That's official, bro. <laughs> yeah. So wow. we're almost at almost at four hundred. No you know? shit. All fucking individual, fucking you know, different. But I've had people repeat, you know, repeat, come back and grab them. It's funny too, cause I'll have dudes who they'll come grab one, and then they'll either not see me for a while, or they'll see. You know, I have dudes that come back repeatedly, but I'll yeah. have those dudes who like they'll grab one and they won't see me for like six months, and then they'll come grab another one. No doubt. Like oh, bro, like I got trap box number like eighty, number one forty, and like. 192. No you know, shit. Like, They're damn. like collectors, bro. They are, bro. That's what I tell people. I tell everyone to hold on to them because one of these days, I think when I get to like 500 or something or maybe 1,000, I don't know, but I'm going to do like a, a trap box party. Yeah, I want to have should. like I want to have like a trap box party. Like everybody who ever who got a box, yeah. bring your box. And then that's your ticket. Yeah, that's your ticket. Yeah. That's your ticket that's in. Your signed fire. box. That's fine. If you got a signed box, you, you're in. If yeah. you don't got your box, you're not in. You know, so, so you're gonna be working the door. You're gonna be working the door. Yeah, the, yeah, you gotta, you gotta check of, these motherfuckers. You know your right. signature. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Come on, baby. You, know, you can't fake that shit. You know, you got the fucking three dots. You got the fucking, you know. Zach was pop pop. I know pop. exactly which color, which type of marker I use. The yeah. width of the marker too. So I've yeah. seen you. I fucking seen you doing it yeah. on fucking yeah. Insta, bro. I keep crazy, the marker man. on me, bro, because you never know. You never know. You never know when oh, they might get that trap box fucking yeah. call. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> oh, you gotta have the marker on me. You gotta bleed it. You know what I'm saying? Make sure it's yeah, ready. Yeah, pop it a couple times. You and know? it's funny too, because that's what was that's what was always a trip to me. Like the fact that I, now I think about that shit sometimes. Like now I always gotta keep this marker on me because it's like yo. You know, but I remember the first, the first box, the first box that sold, and I just was like, man, I gotta do something to just make it more like special. Yeah, no doubt. Make it like unforgettable. Something like a fucking you know? signature from the so guy. Like sign it, number it. Yeah. You know? Yo, that and one you did with squints was crazy. Yeah, that was one. That one was crazy. Is it baseballs and shit? It's actually, fucking... Yeah, we did base. That was actually crazy because we did we did so many numbers with that box that we. We ran through because you have to get a hundred boxes printed at a time minimum. Oh you no know? shit! So every time I do a design, it's a hundred boxes. I'll take fifty, give whoever the other collab sure. person their fifty, and we run through them collectively. You know? Okay. So like we, I ran through my fifty, and then Squints and his team ran through the fifty down there in L.A. Right? Whoa! So like we we came down when it came down to doing the trap lot event in Houston, we did it right after the um right after the Astros won the World Series. Yeah. So I was like. You know, timing is key. There it is. Like, bring squints out while they're still excited about baseball. Yeah, Let's go, you bro. know. Let's make baseballs. You know, baseball, yeah. we did hats. I we did all that hats. shit, yep. you know. So yep. 
it was like a whole vibe. He cuts no corners, folks. <laughs> yeah, I do. You know, and what was crazy about that is like, I literally was like, okay, I'm piecing all this together in my head. Like, all right, I got squints coming out here. I got the fucking World Series just ended. I got to get baseballs. And I, I did all this shit within like 30 days of the Ooh. fucking event. So that cost like that cost it you. cost me, it but did. I don't give a fuck. Hey, you gotta do because, it because, bro, do it. it was so legendary. The fucking fact that I had like the hats, for example, I had to fucking source twenty, no, 40, 40 hats with the fucking pirates and Phillies hats, right? Yeah, with the P on it already. Yeah, because yeah. my 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 goal was I had hats that said Trap Lot on them, but I wanted to do the Trap Lot with the official MLB P. And then just add the T R A P and then L O T. Yeah. So that was like a tricky job. Yeah. For the embroidery company. You steps? There no. Excuse me. You no. Just fit it? Fit it. Wow, bro. So this is what I'm telling you. This so picture this. The the the, the events are a month out. Mm -hmm. I gotta call my boy. By the grace of God, I got my boy. Shout out to Experiment in New York. My boy Experiment and my boy Loso. They're, they sew hats for a living. That's, that's okay. what they do. They're, they're sewers and customizers. I call my boy Experiment, like, yo, bro, can you... F but they've taken me to a couple, like, mecca spots in, in, the, in New York where okay. you can go buy all the flavor hats. Like, any fucking yeah. hat, any colorway you want, this, that, the third. So I told my boy, I'm like, yo, bro, can you go to the spot and just grab me 20 of these and 20 of these? Nice, bro. He's like, bro, I got you, bro. I'm going to go over there right now. Like, da da da, da. He's like, just sell me the bread. I sell him the bread. Boom. Solid. He fucking sends the hats back. I get the hats in the mail, but now I got to drop the hats off with the embroidery guy. The embroidery guy is now like, oh, shit. You want to add more embroidery to an already embroidered hat? Yeah. I'm like, is that a problem? Yeah, is that a problem? It might be, but we can think we can do it. I'm oh, like, all right, well, wow. we got like two and a half weeks, so uh, make it they're like, oh, well, normally it takes us a minimum of four weeks, but oh, uh, here we go. I'm like, well, normally you're dealing, you're not, you know, you're not normally dealing with a not so normal guy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, let's put some fucking fire under your ass yeah, and act yeah. like, we, what do you, you mean, know? pal? Right, <laughs> act like we were trying to make something fucking dope happen here. And bro, yeah. they they closed it out. They fucking oh, home run it. Shout out to Cotton Customs in in Houston. You know, put Hell it down yeah. for me. So. They dropped that shit, and it was, like, so vital to have squints, the hat, the baseball, the the gas, the trap box. And then we had to get 100 new trap boxes printed because, we remember, I told you we you ran through out. the 50. Yep. So for that specific event, we got another 100 boxes done and changed the colorway. So it was, like, you know, we hit it with, a like, it was, like, before it was, like, some, like, yellow-red type of vibe. Yeah. We changed it to, like, a blue-green vibe and switched a couple pictures out of squints in there, made it a little different addition. So That's we've fire. we've done numbers. Foreign genetics, shout out to Foreign Genetics, man. We've done numbers yeah. with the trap boxes. They uh, got they've, some fire too. They've also, yeah, they've also adopted the trays as well. We got some of their strains in here too. I brought nice. the, I put out the Zach Woods ones right now, but I got the, uh, got a couple foreign strains in there. But yeah, squints approached me one day and just, you know, cause he's always been super supportive and super, hyped about what I was able to do on the art end of things. Aside from yeah. the trapping, you know, he's seen what I was doing with the pack prices and all that back in the day. But then he was like, bro, the, the branding and the marketing is crazy. And I'm like, yeah, man, I, I got so many ideas and we can go so crazy with just different shit. So he was always been down for me just like putting my foot to the floor with just different, yeah, different tight, designs bro. and shit. So, and it's always just, you know, pushed me to be, be more fucking, you know, the fact that it's like, oh, shit, you know, because that's a childhood hero, too. Like, you know, Squints is a legend. Yeah, man. So when people talk about that, like, I, I still think back how it all just came together. So org organic. That's so wild, bro. Was talking to him on the gram. Was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to fucking link up with you. When I get to L.A., I'll hit you up. You know, I, ended, I was in L.A. the next week chilling with my boy. My boy, quiet as kept, was the fucking trapper for foreign genetics the whole time. I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so he, had the link for you he right was there. getting nah, he was getting the packs. He was getting all the squints packs and shit. Okay. And I did I had just I had met him maybe like a couple months before as so we had been chilling doing our thing, but I didn't really know, you know, he was Squints' guy or the foreign genetics guy. Yeah. You know, I knew he had gas and I was yeah. going through peeping the gas, but I it was no it was not branded and shit. There was no sure. bags or nothing. So but then he started telling me like one day I mentioned, like, oh, yeah, I was talking to the squints from Sandlot. And he's like, yeah, he's like, that's one of my partners. He's like, he's on his way over here. He'll be oh, here in, like, 10 shit. minutes. I'm like, what? What the I fuck? I just was on the gram talking to this nigga, telling yeah. him, like, well, next time I'm in L.A., I'll hit you up, like, on some, like, 
fan shit. Like, yeah. You know, like I'm talking to Squints from the Sandlot. Yeah, I didn't yeah, even not like out. Squints the grower. Yeah. You know exactly, what I'm saying? So, exactly. like, it all just came together. Like, and then he pulled up and he's like, oh, you're Zach? And I had some of the boxes there already. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah, bro. Like, let me cook up. Let me cook up. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'll mm-hmm. cook something dope for you. Mm-hmm. Like, do your thing, bro. So I was like, fuck it. Nigga, I'm going to go in the lab. Let's go. You know, and bro. I called my boy. I was like, yo, we got one. We got a big one. Got a big one. Yeah. Let's go. Let's hit a home run here. You know, we did, bro. We That's fucking crazy. That's been crazy. We sold over 100 trap boxes between the two of you. Yeah. And we're probably fuck. into, we're probably, you know, in, we've moved a few of the new ones too, quite a few of the new ones too. So the new ones are, the that hundred's getting chipped into already yeah. too. So, yeah, you know. Yeah. Good That's vibes, legend. man. Good vibes. This is actually a really good segue to just bring it back to when mm-hmm. Zach Woods was born. Yeah. Oh, Zach th- Woods was born. Because, look, from the outside looking in, the fucking up, bro, I'm 80s baby, grew up on Saved by the Bell. Mm-hmm. Two stack sack, pay you later, Slater, light Depp Lisa. I'm like, me and my cousin are going fucking nuts. <laughs> We're like, yo, who is this fucking guy? This is fucking brilliant, bro. Right. This is Boof, uh, but with Boof Belding. Booth Boof Master Bo- Belding. Booth Master Belding. Yeah. Fucking yeah, you know, it, all the shit, all bro. the characters, yeah. So that that's what it was, man. I, I really had Where did to this like come from, man. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? It came from it really came from memes. It came from memes. Okay. Like that's where the brand was born. The brand was born. Yes, it certainly was based on memes. Shout out to my man Sour Waves. We the ones that really Waves, sit bro. back. And yeah, you guys were fucking gunning. Bro. We cooked up the whole, uh, you know, two stack Zach pay you later Slater thing, and really just you know that hit the net. And the names kind of just stuck, bro. Like, I feel like people, like, they heard that shit and got a good kick out of it because they can relate to who, you know, we, what course, we were talking bro. about and all this type of shit. So I was like, man, let me fucking, let me just run with this as far as, like, you know, and it was crazy because I'm seeing the the birth of, like, cannabis branding. Living in, I'm living in San Fran at the time. I'm yeah. seeing it all happen right there in front of me. I'm trapping on Hate Street. I'm meeting people all over Hate. And just fucking, you know, like being up and down the block. So like, I was like, you know what? Let me fucking give my own little thing a, you know, a try. But what am I gonna do? Everyone's doing candies and cookies and cereals and all these different things. But I'm like, I don't want to do that, you know. Yeah. I want to do something that's like more legendary, like sure. you know, like more like that's gonna really grab you. Like what can grab you? Well, the brick phone for one is very nostalgic. Sure is. But you can't just be the brick phone because I was like, I was like, that's what hit me first. Like, all right, you know, I'm trapping. I'm like, it's got to be something re- that has to revolve around the trap. But it's like, all right, the brick phone, the pager, the the pay phone. I'm like, all those things are, are just one entity of it. But it's like, damn, who was, who was the one that made that shit? Like, popping. Zach. Zach made the brick phone pop. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck who you are in this world, you, unless you're just some fucking tech Wall Street dude who knew about fucking cell phone technology and brick phones back. But Zach is the one that brought the fucking brick phone into your home. Yeah, he's the first one to bring the brick phone into your home. Like the first, especially a kid. I was gonna say a youngster too, a, a youngster, high school, a high school kid. Yeah, you never. That was beyond. Whoa. You gotta have money for that, mm-hmm. you know. What yeah, I'm saying? yeah, of like, course. We always thought that's that. like that was like a rich kid thing. So of course, you know always. what I'm saying. So when that, when I seen that, I was like, okay, tie in Zach, and we had already we had already been doing the memes. So the the branding shit starting in my head, and then it's like the brick phone, and then I don't know, it's just kind of like all culminating at once. So it just hit me like boom, Zach Woods, you know, and that's what really did it because. One of my boys, he sent me an image one day of just, I don't know why. I don't even know why. Maybe because, maybe, no, it was because I, I started making, using the term two stack Zach. So he sent me an image yeah, that's of Zach stack, just bro. with fucking, just all hype beasted out. Yeah. With the Supreme shirt, with the fucking, with the headband, with the, you know, and it, it, it was just a. Uh, it was Zach on a cover of Backwoods, and it said Backwoods. Mm-hmm. The image said Backwoods on it. And I'm like, it said Two Stack Zach, and I'm like, why? Why would it, why do you say, what, what does the Backwoods have to do with, you know? Like, yeah. What does that have to do with anything? Like, I get the image, Zach yeah. or whatever, but he fucking tells me, like, oh, nah, Zach Woods, like, make it a, make it a, and I'm like, oh fuck yeah, that's that. I'm all that's how we do it right there. 
That's how we tie in the brick phone. That's fucking cool, bro. Oh, yeah, that's my new handy dandy <laughs> electric this grinder. Thing, bro. That's for you, Holy by the way. You shit. know, that's a little gift I brought you. Damn, thank you, bro. You know, this thanks. motherfucker just, ah. Yeah, call that the whack it. The whack it. This thing's fucking cool, man. Look you at know, this fucking Don't thing. pack it till you whack it, baby. Don't pack it till you whack it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, man. Look at this I, fucking uh, device. I dropped that thing with, uh, where's the box at right here? Wow. My dude. people over at the whack it company, you know, we got the little flyer. Fly to Drip, my boy, who did the trap box art, and he did the, you know, the art for these as well. Dude, this is fucking cool, man. We got the leaves right here, too, but these are actually about to undergo some uh, some art surgery as well. So when they come okay. out the lab, they're going to be looking like the trap box and the grinder. Ooh. You know, and we also have the collab with ST DuPont Real on sauce. the way, which is that's also going to be the final in, piece that's going to match the trap box, the leaves, and the grinder. Going down. So we're going to have the whole Press trap that? box. I'm not actually fucking. Yeah, this is one of them right here. This, I place. usually keep a couple on me. That's like my fat boy white oh, flame right wow, there. Bro, Look at this that. This is fucking nuts. For your fat blunts. Whoa. And then this is for your direct, like, and it's just straight, that side, straight up. The side fucking button. Man. Yeah, like side that. button. Real oh, this is fucking Just cool, make sure man. it's not upside down. Right, that's no good. <laughs> No, it'll burn your fucking it'll hand. It'll burn you? Okay. <laughs> okay. It could. It's. I think it does have a little trigger switch, but this one doesn't. That one does. That where this you turn. If you turn it upside dope, down, bro. it won't light. How much these uh, lighters run? These are some baller lighters. I'd say anywhere from three to four hundred bucks. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. Why? Just curious. Um, it's if you look up St. Dupont, they are like uh, like they the are like the cigar Porsche lighter. of. There of, you go. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, the Ferrari Porsche of the torch game. So. There's a lot fire. that goes into these. You can really go on there. Steal one of those. Go you, under, you're gonna fight over that oh, shit. Oh, bro, there ain't no stealing this. <laughs> Slide no stealing that right this. over here. I bro. literally, I literally fucking had to get on my boy the other day because I thought uh, we were at the sesh and this nigga fucking. I thought a custy walked off with my lighter, bro, and I was like watching the custy like leave to the door, like going towards the door, and I was getting ready to go press him. And then like <coughs> I walked, I looked up and I seen my boy, and I'm like, "Hey, bro, man, you got the lighter?" He's like, "Yeah, bro." As I, I walked off with it, I'm like, <sighs> bro, you almost got somebody checked. Hold I almost on. got somebody. Yeah, Jeez. I'm like, thank God, thank God, I asked you first because I was literally watching him, watching him leave the door, and I was like, yeah, nah, I gotta go get my shit. That's why, bro. I'm roll some up for you real quick, man. This is a quality. We rolling up dude. some of this. Uh, what we got right here? The we fugazi. rolling up some of this fugazi. The fucking fugazi. Bro, you yeah. fucking fake ass frauds out there. It's for all you. Fucking clowns. Act like we don't see you. We These see you. Some nice leaves, my friend. Yeah, you know, see what it is, man. We got that very, very. I've seen this fella. Leaf, no, listen, you know. I've seen this fella. He actually Facetimed me from the DR. I, I hit did. him on some random shit. He's I like, did. he in the fucking trenches, <laughs> about to go meet with Poppy. He to lock down his fucking did. deal. I remember that. I remember that. Uh, yeah, I was man. in the trenches. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. He was on his it would come a long way, man, from putting stickers on back. Yeah, with, baby, bro. You know? so went source the went shit to from DR, bro. Went straight bro. to the plug. Got the freshest leaf, man. These are fucking dope, bro. So we gonna be, we gonna be, you know, running it up. And this is what I want to tell people too about about this market and this game and all this stuff too, bro. It's like everybody be asking me like, why I've been gone into the legal market and shit like that. It's like I'm gonna tell you like this: the 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 business that I've seen there hasn't been, you know, so lucrative. For some, and from what I've heard, so I'm just gonna be an advocate of always staying independent, staying on your own, building your own fucking brand, not watering your shit down or letting somebody else water your shit down. Stay independent, bro. Do your thing. Stay whatever, whatever floats your boat. But what you should always be doing is trying to open other avenues, bro. Like the leaves are a completely different avenue for me. The grinder is a different avenue. Yeah. Everything's a different, you know what I'm saying? Like no that's a, that's a whole. This is a whole other play right here. Oh, for sure. This is bro. not even like you know. What I mean? This could be a life changing, <coughs> absolutely, bro. Thing that you know what I'm saying that if I like I, if I didn't jump on that flight and take the trip to DR when Issa fucking Issa's the one that put that whole thing together. Shout out to Issa. You know, man. shout out to Smoke for Life. Shout out to Issa, Smoke my brother. For life. You know what I'm saying? That's Hell yeah. He's the one that called me and told me, bro, you got to be on this plane. You got to be in DR. The big dog wants to meet you. Hmm. You Hell know, yeah. whenever a motherfucker tells me the big dog wants to meet yeah. me, I'm it's going. Time to go. I'm going. I'm not sitting it's around. Time to go. I'm not waiting. So I just went out there and really. What never... was that experience like, man? Cool peoples? I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Going to the DR was like a fucking was like a adult field trip. I haven't been on a what, what I could. I've traveled the world. 
Traveled the world, done a lot of crazy shit, but I haven't been on a field trip. When I say field trip, I mean traveling and learning. Got you. At got the you, same time. You. Yeah. Like you learn while you travel a lot, different things about, but I'm talking about this is a specific thing I went out there to learn about. I, learned, I went out you, there. You, post, you documented this shit, bro. Right. I was listening. So I'm documenting the whole thing and I'm like trying to like, because that's how I, I was like a kid, bro. Like I literally, that's how I felt. I felt like such a child, like so happy to be there. So fucking thankful that I'm in the DR able to like, it's like, bro, like I've been smoking blunts my whole life. How am I going to turn down a fucking trip to go learn about the fucking plant? Yeah, bro. You know, and yeah. everything about it. And they literally showed me everything from the fucking same thing how you would do a cannabis facility. Sure. Seed to sale. Sure, yeah. They showed me the smallest seeds. They showed me the fucking, what, what the plant looks like at one week as to what it looks like when it's yeah. finished to going into the aging room and sitting in a, a room of, of leaves that have been aged for five years, three years, ten years. Holy you know what I'm saying? I, I saw no every fucking process wow. of the shit. On top of the fact I was on, you know, we're like on like a fucking huge, massive acre farm of just tobacco as far as the eyes can see. Like no the most shit. beautiful, like, it was wow. one of the most beautiful countrysides I can That's say cool, I've man. ever stood there in just amazement wow. of the beauty that I was looking at. Yeah. And it was the craziest part of that, too, was like, even even beautiful sounds, right? Like so, I'm like sitting here, Wildlife. like I'm sitting here amazed, yeah. looking at this field. Poppy done walked off. He's talking with his other partners. I'm just like, so literally had a I had a pack of leaves on me, and I just I literally just put the pack of leaves in the tobacco plant that was like just surrounded by nothing but other mm -hmm. tobacco plants. And I'm just looking at it like, man, this is so beautiful. I got all this shit right here, and this view. And I'm just sitting there, and it's like this ill silence. And all of a sudden, I hear this little knocking noise, knocking noise, knocking noise. What the fuck is that? And I look up, and there's a fucking tree right there, and there's a hole in the tree. There's a woodpecker. Oh, no shit. I'm like, Woody's in this bitch. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Like, ah, Soaking ah. it up, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> My nigga Woody. I forgot he used to laugh bitch. like that. That's bro, that's the funniest, bro. bro. It's funny as shit. I'm going to have to drop a Woody pack on these niggas, man. <laughs> you feel me? The good That's piece of hoodie pack. What do these uh, retail for, bro? What's that? The the leaves and then the wax. Um, the leaves I sell. They're twenty a pack. Nice. And a hundred for the box. Um, you get eight leaves in a pack. Okay. They're extra large leaves. You don't have to throw any away like Backwoods or these other fucking companies that give you this dry, stale ass leaf. Yeah. You um. They're like I said, they're extra large too. So you you see how we roll fat. We don't roll skinny. So yeah, yeah, that's respectable. You, know, you got the vein down the middle every time. There's no fucking sideways vein action. Yeah. So it's really um, just me going in detail with what I want out of a cigar, out of my cigar smoke. Yeah. You know my leaf, and you know I've I've been through the trials and tribulations of every fucking shitty backwood you, name you possibly have. You name it, yeah. Good God, and just Good being God. tired of just like you know. Walking in the store and getting fucking bent over every time at the counter, you know, because that's basically what it is. Yeah. You walk into a store, oh, you bro. pay fucking twelve dollars okay. for allegedly five leaves. You go get two leaves, so basically, I just paid six dollars a leaf. Yeah. So I got bent over. Yeah. For you real. know what I'm saying? And the, and then the smoke experience still ain't all that. So yeah, man. They why would cleaning? Why wouldn't I shit? go exactly? Those don't look like they need to be cleaned at all. Those look clean. These are actually pre-washed. They oh, wash pre -washed. them before oh, no shit, they clean man. them before they even go in the patch. Come on, bro. When they clean them with That's uh, fire. a with a water solution mixed with uh, That's like fire, sugar bro. cane. So yeah, no. Nah, they're pre-washed, pre-clean. That's another reason why I believe they stay so fresh too. Like you could leave them out for a couple of days. They're oh no gonna, shit, they're not gonna, gonna go crisp crispy. Up on you. No, Damn, they don't. Bro. They don't do that. So That's what's up. This man. is a vibe, man. I'm, like I said, it was a, it was a, it was a blessing for me to like. The, the leaf play to fall in my lap like this and cause that's exactly what happened it just fell in, fell into my lap and I was like yo I gotta run with this cause this is what everyone was telling me in the beginning when I started Zach was like oh you should do your own leaf yeah you should do your own leaf and I was like I don't even sounds know, like I, a lot sounds like a lot yeah right sounds like I don't even know where to get started on that yeah but then when you know fast forward two years later and it just you met the so, plug you met the plug you know that, so, that's a beautiful day in any hustler's fucking journey Right, you meet the big and dog. You meet actually, Poppy. You know, I met, I met a, you know, I got introduced to the leaf first 
and then I was blessed to be able to meet the plug. So once I fucking oh, met so you found this leaf first and found the quality. You was like, I gotta yeah, meet this guy. The leaf, the okay. leaf was yeah, the leaf like it came to me when I was in Miami. Okay, and then once I once I established that this is something that I want to work with. It was like, no, nah, I got to go talk to the big dogs and get this shit Only right. rocking, you know? So Only right. once I got out there and really saw what's going on, and not only that, too, you know, shout out to my guy David in the DR, man, because he really looked out for me, and he believed in me. You oh, know? that's tight. That's more, more important than me going out there and just with a dollar and a fucking big bag of money and yeah. all this talk and what I want to do is like, no, he saw me, and I basically explained to him what it is that I do, and I think in the time that we became, you know, friends and became like, you know, started talking about doing this business venture, he really saw what I could do. Mm -hmm. And what that was like starting from my trip to the DR, but following up with that, we took a trip to, um, we took a trip to Vegas together to go to uh, a tobacco convention, you know, which is where I closed, okay. the, which is where I closed the ST DuPont deal. And I closed that deal right in front of him. Oh no shit! Right, so they seen your mouthpiece. They, in action. they, he saw me, and it was crazy. Yeah. If I was, if I remember correctly, he, I was watching him. He was, he was watching me from a distance, like he was just like you know, off to the distance. He wasn't in the conversation. He wasn't listening to what I was saying. He wasn't close enough to hear what I was saying. But I could see him, just checking me out, smoking a cigar, walking around the display while I'm opening the trap box, showing them the showing them the cannoli. I'm literally smoking a cannoli when I walk up on these dudes. And it's not even ashed yet. So I'm like getting ready to fucking ash it, but I'm giving them the whole presentation. This is that. And this is why you want to work with me. And this is why I'm the only trapper out here that rocks the ST. Not that rocks it, but I've been rocking it, supporting yeah. it, put about fucking yeah, $15,000 $15, worth of fucking, you know what I'm saying, of yeah, lighters on my goddamn dinner at the living room table in Miami. So, fire, you know, like, I've been a fan of you guys long before there was ever talks of me doing a collab. And the fact of me, the way that even happened, it didn't even, it was never even planned. I was literally at this fucking tobacco convention. The first day I was walking around with Poppy, we're just chilling. I'm networking with a couple yeah. other leaf companies. The second day I'm there, I kind of felt like the first day I kind of just fucked off. So the second day I'm there, I walked in with, like, a whole new attitude. Like, I'm coming in today. I'm fucking... I'm I'm rubbing elbows. Yeah, I'm talking to people. I'm First day was the warm getting up. numbers. I'm yeah. I just wanted to see yeah. what was what. Feel the area. This time it's like no. I'm you know. So I came in fucking swinging, with with the big poppy behind me too, Let's trying to go. tell people about the leaves, trying to get leaf fucking deal. You know. So I'm showing him I can fucking do that. And then just on a whim, I'm like, you know what? What else do I need here? I need a torch. Like I need my own torch. Yeah. You know, I need a Zach Woods torch, but it's gotta be. You know, I didn't even know ST DuPont was in the building. I saw, what's that fucking brand? Um, Vortex or fucking some shit. Like, there's like a couple of different brands that are like, you know, that we all fucking see and know, but they're not like expensive by any stretch, you know? Yeah. So I'm seeing these other brands and I'm like checking them out and I'm asking them about their, you know, what it takes to yeah, do a collab. Yeah, yeah, no and you doubt. know, oh, this minimum, that minimum. Okay, cool. Okay. Spin the block in CST booth and I'm like well fuck it let me go ask them shoot my shot talking about. Yeah, right. closed mouths don't get fed right that's right so I had the trap box on me the squints box I was smoking a cannoli I had my ST on me my other one but it oh, just wasn't come on, man. so I'm just like I walked them and I'm telling them and then the guy starts telling me oh yeah this is nice like you know dope and then he goes let me go get my the, the, the sales manager yeah yeah go get him hey go get that guy yeah go get that guy the guy above you, you figure out this yeah guy, this guy yeah this yeah. guy comes over you know and you ain't making like, no decisions over here he's like oh man <laughs> he's seeing everything so I'm smoking the cannoli and I'm blowing it and I'm like you know I got the ash hanging and I'm telling him I'm like yeah this is my this is my cigar right here this is a hundred dollar cigar almost two and a half grams of flour grandma hash rosin in here expensive shit you know we're smoking really good Last thing I want to do is light this thing with a fucking bit. You feel me? I'm you know not going to disrespect this disrespect fucking... Disrespect the fucking flower, the blade. Well, if you know anything about lighting the hash hole, you don't light it with a bit anyway because yeah. it just fucks your whole room. Yeah, we only light joints with those no yeah. more, bro. So I'm telling him, I'm like showing him the whole shit. I pull out the ST. I got it. Like, this is, you know, I clearly got plenty of these. I've been a fan for a long time. You know, and then I flick the ash. Boom. I'm like, look, we got the nice little hole down the middle. You know, they were blown away by that. Like, yo, probably the probably first like, hash hole they seen, right? right? The first hash hole they yeah. seen. And then I get the phone out, zoom in with the camera, 
show them the fucking the hash bubbling show in them the future yeah, in the hash show, future, you know what I mean you know exactly and be like you know this is the only I would only want to light this type of cigar Yo. with the ST DuPont Yo, let alone took uh, them down into the dungeons of the hash the fucking, into the barrels of the hash <laughs> the barrels and then we're talking about foreign dudes these dudes are from fucking France or some oh, shit oh they're bugging know? so they're like you know ST DuPont's a French company so yeah. they're, they're they're blown away and the guy hit me with the oh yeah I definitely wouldn't want to co- continue this conversation later I'm like nice, bro. shoot me an email and if you can be in your best interest shoot me your templates to these lighters you know, because that's what we want to really get talking about. Okay. I was already showing him the artwork on the box. I'm, I'm going to have my guy do this to the yeah, lighter. Yeah, whip that thing up. And he's like, oh, man. like you know, but What I vibe are you going with? Right. I, the I, lighters? Um, I don't know what yet. Design? They, they sent me They sent me like five different templates. Okay. I definitely want to rock this one. That's fire. This is this is like the that's original. Fire, bro. This one is I the like one. that one. Yeah. That's the one I like. This one it, it kind of reminds me of like a Porsche key or a Lambo key or it, something yeah, like that. Yeah, bro. And then it just has that sturdy Feels like foreign. it has the sturdy little bumpers. It yeah. has a nice frame and I think this is just the one that everyone knows. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Most people who have ST DuPont, this is like the there's ones that are a little bit cheaper on the 100 200 end, a little bit smaller. These are the ones that are like standard 350 400 Okay. This is like the standard, you know. They also have one though that's like next level, like you know the 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 gold ones. They're like the flip open, uh-huh. make the little yeah. ching noise when you flip it open. Yeah, yeah. So they have those, but those are those are like, I think they they retail at like seventeen hundred, sixteen, seventeen hundred. So. God they damn, big, man. Yeah. So this is for the big baller cigar this, smokers. This for the big. This, this for the, 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 the aficionados. And there this is go. what I like to consider myself. I'm not. Let, yeah, let's, clearly, bro. Let's set the fucking on, bar clearly. because, like, I'm not. Clearly. I'm not out here doing this because I want to collab with them so badly. Yeah. I'm doing it because I'm a fan of the brand. One. Yeah. I'm a cigar smoker. Two. I'm a fucking avid believer in lighting your cigar properly. Yeah. So there's so. that's three reasons right there. Yeah. That I'm not touching the fucking bic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, yeah, bro. it's like no disrespect. You know, we grew up on them, but you yeah, know, we've no, also just, we also evolve. You level up, you know. So You're always this is my bro. this is my way I always keep my fucking burn line intact. Yeah, you know, I, see no you. I see you, I see you, Every I see 30 you. Every thirty seconds, three, four minutes, yeah, you gotta man, give it a little right. tss, you know, so little, how you doing? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Little, what are you saying? I love it. So yeah, no, it's That's a fucking dope, it's a vibe. Bro. But um, that that is gonna be obviously it takes a little time. That's gonna take a, probably about a year to, to produce and all that type of shit. That's so all right. That's all right. It's all good, baby. Like I said, don't this is that. you don't want to rush I'm not, that. I'm not rushing that. This no. this is actually the collab. Like all the collabs that I've had have not been nothing. Pretty fucking nothing legend, forced. Yeah, yeah, I haven't heard. They're all any. legendary and nothing. That, they're never. Me going yeah. to ask. Okay. I don't fucking ask people for collab. Bro. Yeah. Like, that's not how you do it. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't get it, you don't yeah. collab like that. Let it that. happen. Just let it happen. It's got to happen. It's okay. got to be natural. If it's not yeah. one-sided, trying to be, oh, I want to do it, and the other guy, you're trying to convince him to do it, he's not sure because you're not sure if your motion's right. Yeah. It's not even a, it's not gonna work right there. Cause when it happens, it happens right away. It feels like fucking magic, and it's, and just, it's just like, like and you're both feeling really and when good you're about going, it. When you go in the creative yeah. creative lab, it just it's no issue, yeah. bro. Things are just boom. Effortless, so, effortless. So I have I have you know plenty of shit like that, but it's like you definitely none of it's been forced, and I love that. I love that it's just you know it's so fluent, and everything just comes out crazy. Yeah. And then I happen to have this fucking crazy roster of people that I work with. But that yeah. also goes into the fact that me being you've been outside, bro. Been outside, been outside, you know, moving and shaking, time, my boy. You know, so. Hell yeah, bro. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you this: What would you give? What, what kind of advice would you give somebody that's in your lane in cannabis right now, bro? In my lane, like I said, my best advice to you would be to push your brand as hard as you can. Um, get as many things going outside of the actual just cannabis too. Like I said, the leaves, the do whatever, whatever else you can. That's yeah. gonna, you know, get you a store, get you, you know, some. There's other ways to just succeed in this game without just running to the legal market. Yeah, because ninety percent of the people I see that ran to the legal market are not winning right now. No, and it's, it's fucking just miserable. The bottom bro. line, everyone it sucks, bro. bro. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Not fun. It's crazy to me because this is this is. I dealt with this. I have more you fun know, doing I'm a, this, I'm a, bro. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk real shit right now. Go I ahead. dealt with this when I first. Started my brand, yeah. and I noticed this shit, and it was just like, it was fucking funny to me because, you know, back in 2018, 2019, when everyone was going legal, was all the bright and fucking, everyone had their yeah. fucking eyes lit and was going crazy. Ever. Yeah. 
And, you know, you had those people that were getting their licenses and those people that were, you know, like that was the first thing they asked you if you were a new and upcoming brand. It's kind of like when you used to go to the bar, the first thing someone asked you was like, what do you do for a living? Yeah, yeah. The first thing someone would ask you would be like, oh, are you legal? Mm-hmm. And it'd be like, <laughs> if you said no, if you said no, I'm in the black market, they kind of like turned their nose up at yeah. you a little bit. I remember like, that at acted first. Acted like they were better than you. Yeah, oh. I, oh, you're still in the traditional, traditional. market. <laughs> That's the, and I was just like, when I heard that for the first time, I was like, what does that mean? I'm offended. And they're like, the oh, fuck? the black market. I'm like, oh, so that's what we're calling that? We yeah, got to fuck, we gotta, we gotta censor the black, the word black yeah, now? Yeah, like, yeah. damn. Yeah. I'm like, all right. So, but I remember that. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I, I just felt, I, I didn't take no offense to it, but I just remember like, oh, you got your little sense of entitlement because you got that little yeah. license you got waxed for. Yeah. Like, okay. Talk about and it. And then, fast forward two, three years later, post-pandemic, Uncle Zach been out here winning while yeah. y'all was in the house fucking watching the TV telling you you can't go outside. Now, all of a sudden, everyone wants to come back outside and trap. Yeah. Everyone oh, yeah. wants to come to f- take flights. Everyone wants to go yeah. to the cities that I was in during the corona taking fucking flights yeah. to with three people on the plane. And I know none of you motherfuckers were on the plane because I didn't see none of you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was in yeah. all the airports. Well, they, they couldn't know? hop off the fucking porch until the packs were fucking right. thousand and then And then that too. So you it's like that too. It's like they weren't oh, out there. Turn the hustles. They weren't out there like putting it down. Like, bro, like I've been in the fucking market when the packs were low. I've been oh, the reason yeah, the packs baby. went up. I've been, you know, I've, been on my surfboard, I've served, baby. Served, on, survived it all, baby. So like at the end of the day, it's Same all about another one. just investment. Yeah, you just. This one lasted a little longer. Oh, yeah. This one lasted a little bit longer. Bring the pack prices up whenever. Y'all ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Shit. Sheesh. But that's why we got these, you know, these fresh new bags. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Shout out to Grove Bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they're called, right? Grove Bags, yeah. Grove Bags. Shout out to my sponsor, Grove Bags. Yeah, shout out to the sponsor. We always got to show love to the sponsor. Six layer, non static. Add Keep, 90 days to your fucking shelf life. What are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Come on, you can't beat that See, with a lot of you folks. niggas sitting on the shelf, so you need that. Getting crusty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's the next five, ten years look like, brother? What's on the man, horizon for Zach Woods, know, man? Um, I think it feel like a lot of shit, bro. It's a lot. A whole bro. lot. I have, I don't, you know, like, this whole shit's been freestyle, bro, to be honest. Like, I ain't going to fucking hold you. None of it was planned. I ain't mad at it. None of it's fucking been planned. It just fucking take it day by day. But what I will say is I'm definitely... Um, I'm a bricklayer, bro. Like every day, I know there's more work to be done. I know there's shit to be fucking. You know, I'm I'm building the legacy right here. I'm doing something yeah, right. that you know a lot of people haven't done and taking the taking a path that I don't feel like anyone has taken. Like my path is kind of un- unorthodox. So yeah, bro. That's I just why it's uh, working, buddy. Yeah, you know, you know? And, like I have my lane. That's why I say like yeah. when I see people bite something that I do or take something that I've used or whatever the fuck, you know, it's like. It's like it's it's cool, man. Like right now, I see a lot of these. They just look goofy because this shit's that unique, bro. right? Right. You know, so I see a lot of people, you know, using shit, and it's like it's cool, but you didn't do it right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You yeah, didn't yeah, know. Yeah. You don't know. You might have took something that I used, yeah. or or recycled it, or flipped it to weight, but you don't know what I was thinking when when you know how much different things went into yeah. what. You know, so like you could might yeah. be able to bite the physical aspect of it. But they're still like subliminal, mental, you know what I'm saying? Hidden messages and just like mm-hmm. other shit that went into it that you don't even understand. Yeah. Memes. It's just like, you know, it's like, it's so deep. it's like, what is wrong? It's deep. deep. Yeah. So, you know, you can take, like, that's what I've always felt about Zach Woods. It's like, they can take little bits and pieces of it and try and run with it, but you can never be me, bro. Yeah. You can never do no what way, I do. Dude. You no can't. Because yeah. you don't have the fucking balls, you don't have the fucking bread. You don't have the fucking, you know what I'm saying? The fucking, the the will to just get out there and just leave it all behind. Like, yeah. I've left it all behind, bro. I'm going to my house in San Francisco. I have not opened the door in two years. <laughs> I am so excited to yeah, see right? what's in there. I'm gonna, see it's what's like a Zach there, Woods museum. Yeah. You know, so I'm going to, I know there's going to be some of the original Zach slaps. I got the event Saturday at, uh, you know, at uh, Soma Skate Park. So 
I'm going to the crib Friday night. I'm just going to sit in my crib all night and just go bro. through all the fucking Zach Woods memorabilia. That's going to be special for you, bro. That's going to be a special moment for you. You're really going to be able to see your progress, man. Like when you sit, right. when you sit I'm going to be able to, bro. You should stay there and I'm just gonna, chill. I am. And just smoke and just Somebody like, asked me, one of, my, one of my people asked me, like, are you going to fucking get a hotel? And I'm like, you know what, bro? I'm probably just going to clean off my fucking bed and sleep in my fucking bed in San Francisco. Yeah, bro. <laughs> that I That's haven't fucked, slept yeah. in so long. Why not? Wake up and smoke a Save blunt a couple on, my hundred fucking, bucks, you know? on my fucking second floor. Balcony, yeah, man. You know, come a long way from that Miami yeah, balcony. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, bro. That shit you should, is crazy. Man. You absolutely so. should, bro. No, it's a, it's a blessing, it's bro. It's, it's good to be back in the Bay, man. It's good to be back to just reflect on everything, and then you know, tapping with all the good people that I've that I that helped me push this shit. Yeah. Because that's where this is where Zach Wood started, bro. Zach Wood started in the heart of Frisco, so. Everyone in the Bay that was on Hate Street that was fucking helping me, especially my man Issa, like I said, he's been around and connected me with so many people in the city that I, like, he took me to the Green Door for the first time. Not to the Green Door for the first time, but he took me to the the VIP part. Yeah, where, upstairs. You know, upstairs. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Where that's where you become someone, you know? like no you know, That's where the rappers not, go. Right, you know you're not nobody to yeah. you up there blowing, you know yeah, what I'm saying? No you doubt. go, everyone was, I was like, oh yeah, I was going to the Green Door too because it was like new. It was mm-hmm. new, the whole branding thing, fucking, you know, it was just all new. So we're like, yeah. And the Green Door actually had gas, too. So I would go, I wouldn't, all the other dispensaries I went to in Frisco were kind of fucking, didn't really have gas like that. But the yeah. Green Door was always cooking. There was always somebody that was, like, popular in the scene there. And then for me, it was like, once Issa took me up there, and then I realized, like, that when I moved to Frisco, it was, like, like right before the fucking playoffs and the fucking football season. So, like, you could go watch the games up there. Oh, shit. They That's had tight. games, and they had the fucking TVs with the little yeah. fucking food uh, vending machines and shit. So you could just chill up there, you know, smoke and watch football. So I was like, Fire. everyone wants to fucking go drink and watch football. I'm like, I don't drink like that, you know? Same. I do once in a while. Yeah, but cases. usually the only time I do is when I'm with my football guys. Yeah. You know, I might get smashed on a Sunday, you know, fucking yeah. with the Raiders and shit. But Hell win yeah. or lose, you know, we're going – yeah, you know what Trust it is. Me, I get it. I'm a Mets fan, bro. right? Right. So you know, so again, um, once in a while it'd be cool, but you know, for the most part, I wouldn't be wouldn't be too drunk. But once I found this spot, it's like okay, I can watch my games and just blow. Mm-hmm. Shit, I was in. That was like for me, the Green Door was like a godsend. Yeah, like church. So it was like the first the first three months that I lived in Frisco ever. So I moved there in the beginning of right at the end of 2015, the beginning of 2016. Mm-hmm. So it was like heaven for me right there and i'm just living in the bay doing the met isa and just started meeting all these fucking different people and once i started seeing everyone had a brand everyone was doing this everyone's like i'm like damn everyone's doing something and then i seen the mylar movement hit and the fucking runts shit hit the runts your life up movement oh yeah you know but i'm starting to be in the building with these niggas yeah yeah i'm chilling over here i see ski mask i see lb i see nero i see all these dudes I'm at the Glow Trade Warehouse. Why? Because a lot of the times, because of my nigga Issa. You know, like oh, Issa done plugged yeah. me in. That's dope, or like, bro. I'm beyond Hate Street kicking it with Issa and me, oh yeah, this is our, this is my boy from so and so brand. And this is my boy, you know? Yeah. And he would be like, okay, cool. And it was just like, me and Issa are just two big motherfuckers. So you, no doubt. you pull no up doubt. on Hate Street, you see me and him standing yeah. outside, you know, we both cool motherfuckers too. Yeah. So we, you know, we and we got the gas. So there if me is. and Issa was outside smoking on hate, probably niggas lit. knew what the time it was. Pull up. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I yeah. wasn't Zach at the time yet. You know, no I was doubt. just, I wasn't Zach with yet. So we still, but I still acquired a decent amount of friends and made a bunch of good relationships to the point where when I did drop my brand and I did come off the fucking shelf as mm-hmm. Zach Woods and I started pulling up on Hate Street with a fucking, literally a CVS basket with a fucking sticker farmer Zach Woods sticker over both CVS mm-hmm. logos and a box, uh, uh, just a, a, a basket full of, not these, the just the backwoods with the stickers on them. Yeah. Yeah. Right there, just trapping out there outside of Puff Puff Pass, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, ten dollars, right? Twenty. Twenty for the twenty fucking... a pack. No shit. Same as these, but just no yeah. fucking, just with a sticker on it, and it was back with a backwoods backwoods pack with a fucking with two a stack Zach stick, stick on it, bro. Twenty Zach bucks, Woods, twenty dollars Hollis. That's what Hollis your fucking. I bro. ran up a bag big enough to fucking make my first sticker farmer investment off those twenty dollars. No shit, woods. man. I was buying. I was going. You made to a couple the... bands off this mission, bro. Let me tell you what. This fucking Zach was let what, you, bro? Let me, tell you, let me tell you about the first time. I, this is when I knew Zach was, was going to pop. Yeah. Right? 
<clears throat> I was flying to upstate New York to go to go um, get the fucking backwoods up there because they had them for like mm-hmm. four bucks a pack. Shout out to fucking Oneida. Shout out to motherfucking The Dot, Rome, New York. I went up there, got the packs for the cheap. I had this little broad. I would just sit at their house and just fucking smoke with her and sticker the fucking packs up. Boom, I'm sticker and sticker and sticker. And I had like 200 boxes, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, bet. I'm fucking two duffel bags full of fucking backwoods, fucking back Damn, boxes bro. of backwoods, right? So I'm like, I'm in upstate New York. I'm like, fuck it. I'm like, I gotta, I was gonna go meet my cousin, the one that played for the Kings. Yeah. Um, I was gonna go meet him. He was in New York. I'm like, fuck it. I'm gonna go meet this nigga. And then I'm gonna take all these woods to New York, New York City, and I'm gonna fucking just like kinda like debut that I'm here. You know, yeah. like let people know I'm here with the woods. Cause at that time, I was getting a lot. I st- I was on the gram. I had about 2,000, 3,000 followers, and I was getting a lot of people who were interested in it because they were like, they seen what it was. They seen the hype. It was around the time of the whole uh, exotic soda and then your Mylar yeah. bag. So you had your exotic soda, you had your Mylar bag with the weed, and then you had your pack of fucking Zachwoods. Yeah. That wasn't your average pack of backwoods. So it was like, yeah. you know, it kind of built the little clout NATO right there. You had the little clout NATO. You know what I'm saying? You had the three, oh, the, the Bermuda shit. Triangle of clout. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, and and, you people, bag and that, people, didn't, people didn't understand. Like they, would, yeah. they would be like, oh, what's the difference? What's the difference? And I'm like, look, the difference is the social media experiment that I'm going to have you go do right now. Go take a picture of these backwoods. Post them on your social media. Go take a picture of this pack of Zach Woods. Post it on your social media next mm. to your favorite weed. And wait and see what the people say. No shit. The people are going to want to know what that green pack of fucking shit with cannabis influencer Kelly or Light Depp Lisa or Scheming Screech or Pay You Later Slater. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Is that a pack of Woods? Yeah. Is that a pack of pre-rolls? What the fuck is that? I've no never doubt. seen that. But you're gonna get questions. Yeah, people wanna wanna know, and it's gonna be worth your ten dollars to fucking deal with that. Trust mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that yeah. was kind of I was like, how I was selling. That's a it hell of a pitch, bro. Right, and uh, you know it worked. It worked. It worked. I literally had. I literally had. I remember my first order. I had someone in Boston hit me up and say they wanted twenty boxes. Twenty boxes. I was selling the boxes at a hundred a pop. So okay. I told him, I'm like, all right, I'll do them for 75 a pop on 20. Bet. He sent the bread. Boom. I fucking had to go sticker up 20 boxes of woods. Oh, shit. And shipped them. And now that was when I was like, okay, that was what made me think, like, all right, this might be something. Yeah. And I go to New York, right? So I'm, I'm on the train coming from upstate New York, coming down into the city. I get, I get off the train. My train lands at 420 in the fucking station, Penn Station. And right before, I'm like, damn, I'm, I got to figure out how to fucking, you know, I'm like, what am I going to do to fucking get the city like in a stir, you know? So I was like, fuck it. I'm like, whoever meets me at fucking, you know, this is in the rents era. So I'm like, whoever meets mm-hmm. me at the fucking Penn Station at 420 is going to get a free fucking seven of rents and three free packs of Zach Woods. I'm going to be at Penn Station at 420. Oh, shit. First person to come find me, right? Yeah. So I pull up to Penn Station, bro. I have no idea it's fucking Gay Pride weekend. Oh, no shit. So it's fucking Gay Pride outside of fucking Penn Station. Right. Going crazy. The parade type shit. The parade and everything. Just thousands of people. Yeah. Where I thought it was going to be just a few, you know, come out the train station like a normal New York day. But it's just fucking 100,000 people. Yeah. Top of that. So it turns into the big old Where's Waldo situation. And, and we already don't know what you look like. Don't, nobody knows what I look like at I the time. I know what you look like forever, bro. Right. So I was definitely low key. And that's all I was telling niggas. I didn't show no picture of my face or nothing. I literally just said, come smell me out. I'm gonna be blowing I'm gonna be blowing Rents Pack in Penn Station. Yeah. Whoever comes and sniffs me out. Yeah. And bro, my phone started going crazy. Crazy. I started getting tagged in all these fucking videos of motherfuckers coming because I posted it like two hours out. Yeah. So I gave motherfuckers in New York time to get from wherever they were at to Penn no Station. Doubt. You yeah, know what I'm saying? That. I don't want to. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know New yeah, York you, travel yeah, is a bitch. Bro. So you know, you always got to factor that in. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Look at this. Like, yes. it just has a little fucking yeah, little mini like, stroke oh, right there. Man, fuck. <laughs> 
New so, York traffic. Yeah, Jesus. man. So I factored that in, and then I was like, all right, bet. So by the time I can get into the station, it's crazy. It's booming out there. You know, yeah. like there's people out there looking around. I'm getting tagged in all these videos, and I'm like, oh, shit, I'm getting a bigger response than I thought. Oh, shit. So it's booming. This fucking kid comes up, finds the pack. Shout out my boy Woodcotton. Skater homie ended up fucking being one of my really good friends. We're still friends to this day. Oh, no shit, man. Yeah, yeah. He 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 won the contest, came and found me, won the fucking pack of runs, and then uh, what happened was uh, after that, my cousin who I was supposed to meet up with, I call him. He's like, "Yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna need like three four three four hours. I had to go do some. He plays pro ball, so you got something you got to do with the team." I'm like, right, "All right, right cool, right. whatever. I'll see you in a few hours." So I'm like sitting outside of Penn Station, now Madison Square Garden right there, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, all right, well, what the fuck should I do? And my phone just started going off more. It was like people were just hitting me, like, after the contest was over. Like, yeah, I had already posted that the kid came and won. Yeah. But people were still hitting me, like, yo, bro, do you got those Zachwoods? Yo, bro, you're still at Penn Station, bro? You got those Zachwoods? I need, like, three boxes. Yo, bro, you got those? You, Damn, yo, bro. I need some boxes, bro. How many you got? I'm like, bro, I got, like, fucking... Hunted right here. Yeah. Come get them as many Come as you need, them. right? Bro, I swear to God, sat right there. My That four hours that I was going to try to figure out what I was going to do while my cousin was busy, mm-hmm. sat right there at Madison Square Garden just and just Zachary's. trapped fucking woods with trapped stickers woods. on them and wow, made six bro. bands, bro. Wow. That's Literally legend, fucking bro. made six bands off fucking backwards right there Damn. in four hours. Didn't fucking, like, went to my link with my cousin and was just like, I was blown away. I was like... Yo, this is crazy, bro. I need wow. to get some more woods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't right, think I was going to need right. to get more woods already. You know, I'm like, Damn, holy bro. shit. And it was just going crazy. It started going up from there, bro. Like, I didn't even know you was in the East doing that, bro. Bro, I was in the East heavy, bro. Like, I that's see. The, the, I've, I see. Because I've been out there. When you talk right. about, like, me right. being in New York, bro, we can fucking spin off to that fucking subject, too. Because, yeah. you know, like... That's why I talk about these cats that have been running around NYC. Like, I've really been outside in New York for, you know, since those days with game, bro. I was yeah. at the fucking Hot 97 shootout with Game and 50. I was Shot there. Shot 97. Shot 97. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't so got. It's called Shot you 97. You it's called Shot 97 because we was there. You know what I'm saying? Because we, yeah. we, we pulled up on 50, 50 deep and 50 got a little shook and didn't know what to do when he saw them cedars outside. So, he, you know, he sent one, of, sent one of his little boys out there to fire, fire the pistol for him. You know, and that's what that's what really happened. So, but that was crazy because like these 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 New York niggas, man. Nowadays, not niggas, but just like a lot of these cats out in New York that are just out here perpetrating. They're from Brooklyn, and they're from this, and they're from that. And we go check your history. Come to find out, you was living in Pompano Beach before. You was living Ooh. in you was living in oh, Iowa yeah, before. You Them was living cats in, that moved to Brooklyn from somewhere yeah. else and then they big Brooklyn now. Moved yeah. to Brooklyn. I've from, seen that. I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, we see bro. it all too fucking frequently. Yeah. A lot of and fraud activity from, out bro. here. You know, then we you know go, who's really from Brooklyn, bro. All, bro, it's not hard and, to tell. and it's crazy because it's not hard to tell, bro. People don't understand that all it takes is a people search to find out the real yeah, truth, man. Come on, come on. We fucking. It, it, it'll tell damn near tell you what year you moved to Brooklyn, <laughs> which really you know fucking I mean? which really yeah. fucks you up. It'll really pull your car. A lot of you fucking 2015ers out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just got to the city. You knew. You know. And on that note, we're gonna take a quick break. Yes, sir. What's up, familia? Yo, check this out. I gotta take a second to shout out my sponsor, the Gotti Brand. Thank you so much for the sponsorship. Here's where you can find the fire in California. The Gotti Brand can be purchased at Cookies, Cookies Maywood. Cookies Woodland Hills, Cookies Sacramento, Lemonade Sacramento, Lemonade South Sac, Main Stage Sac and Davis, Zen Garden Wellness down in SoCal, you can get a Lemonade Van Nuys. So thanks again. See y'all back on the show. All right, Two Stack, now it's time Uh-oh, to it's give time. me your top three strains of all time. The infamous top three. The top three. One old school, one new school. And the Desert Island strain. What you getting stuck on the island with for the rest of your life? Man, one old school, one new school. Well, I'm going to fucking say old school, I would have to say the the original hash plant strain. Okay. I've been looking for that for a long time. I don't think I'm ever going to find it again. But that shit I used to have back in like 99, 2000, just that thick, clumpy, fat, sticky bud that just rolled and smoked so nice didn't mm-hmm. cost a lot of money and it was just some fucking real good fucking dope 
So that would probably be my old school. Okay. You know, my uh, my new school strain, I'm going to have to say this new R tsunami right here. Shout out to my man, The Real Sheesh from uh, D.C., Baltimore area. That shit is just it's special. East Coast weed? It's East Coast, man. Oh, shit. That shit is special. It's up there with those Nemo prices. It's that elite oh, no batch. Shit. Wow. You know, we don't even call it small batch because that shit is just elite. Wow, you know, look at that. That shit is crazy. You put that shit look fire. Yeah, it's some stupid. We'll roll some of that up right now. If Hell you yeah. Try it out. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, no. I okay, would, cool. Would, oh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> but yeah, that would definitely be my new school strain because I'm a. Uh, okay. It's one of the newest things out right now. And that's, it's definitely. So What's the genetics? Um, I don't actually know. Yeah, it's on. Funky. It's on. It's on the internet though. I've okay. seen it before. I've, I've read it before. I just can't remember it off the top of my head. But uh, it, you can look it up if you just look up right. Noir Tsunami, the real sheesh. It'll pop up right there. But yeah, that's some stupid dope. Shit stupid looks dope. dope. And uh, you can even give that a little little whack it if you want. It might get a little sticky for the hands, too. No, I'm a, I'm a, you keep I'm it old a, school? No, nah, this shit, like... You keep it no, old no, school? No, no, I'm gonna hit it with the flower mill. Okay. Shout out okay. to... Yeah, yeah, shout yeah. Shout out to flower mill. Yeah, dude. Because I, I wanna... You gotta have you know a little light, light. Gotta do what I'm used to. Yeah, no, I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Roll that shit up. And for the Desert Island, my the brother. The Desert Island strain. I'm a Los Angeles native, so you know I'm gonna bring that OG Kush with me everywhere Ooh, I go. Ooh, another baby. point for OG Kush. Yeah, OG Kush taking Skittles. it fucking home. I'm sorry, I love Skittles too. Skittles though. in the lead for a while. Skittles, you know, Skittles is doing the thing right now. Yeah. But I'm talking about One for Desert OGs. Island, Desert Island forever. Like I need that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I need to have a Facts, nice OG bro. pack. Let me ask you this: If you could bring back what sh one strain, what would it be? If I could bring it back, and it's man. gone for real. I mean, I I mean, what I believe, what I smoked in 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 my childhood to be the whatever chocolate tie. Ooh, I had a real man. strong, strong chocolate tie when I was young. You know, obviously it was back in those days, you yeah. know. Oh, but yeah, uh, really a, young. a chocolate tie out of the nice fucking um the nice fucking chocolate fillies. Remember those dark oh, yeah. the dark oh, yeah, fillies? Yeah. I remember those. That oh, was yeah. just like that was just like a double whammy, you know. Oh, yeah. And if you had that real chocolate tie, that yeah. shit really had that it's like syrup, chocolatey syrupy taste. Yeah, yeah that shit was fire. Had so it once or twice. That's probably one of those throwbacks that we'll never see again. That I'd love to, you know. That's fire. For somebody to fucking go pull a Jurassic Park, yeah. steal the genetics out the fucking right. mosquito, right, 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 right. implement it back into the yeah. like, in the garden. I feel like I gotta smoke that with like Timberlands and some fatigues on and shit. Right, you know right, saying? right. That's, that's some, for that's sure some what I had classic. on. Yeah, that's what you <laughs> had on. Fucking smoke that shit, shit, I had on like some do rag and some chucks. <laughs> you feel, yeah, you feel East Coast, West Coast shit. You right? Know what you know what <laughs> the fucking vibe. That's fucking great. Nigga had that real fucking. That's fucking great. Uh, do rag and some dickies and some chucks on. You feel me? Whole fit costs less than a hundred, bro. That's yeah. the funny thing about LA. Like the funny thing about LA and New York. I've always like laughed about is like because y'all y'all been always so like turned up on the fashion. Yeah. Where it's like yeah. we we are turned up on the fashion too, to in a sense, but more so now. But back, I'm saying like, like back when um, when it was like in those '90s like like days, like it was just like man, LA was so was so grimy. Like where we were just like our our killers were like y'all killers were all fashionably. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was fashion. Chains, nice clothes, Chains, leathers, everything. jackets, like, leather our whole Like our whole fit, like the, you look at the whole like yeah. LA gangster the fit. The old gangster. Under a hundred dollars, yeah. bro. Under a yeah. hundred dollars, shoot the shit out your ass. And, and y'all did not look like y'all was <laughs> like, playing no bro, type of games. Not playing shit. no games, but it would be like, bro, like look at the Chucks. Yeah. $30, 30. Dickies, Dickies, 40. Yep. T-shirt, like in five, ten bucks. Yeah. Do rag, bandana. The, the hammer on you is worth more than hammer everything. Hammer worth more than the whole shit. <laughs> hammer worth good. more than the whole fit. Bro. That shit that's be crazy. That's fucking hilarious, bro. That's crazy. That's that throwback shit, man. Yeah. Like, but but look, that's that real LA swap meet shopper too. And yeah. all my LA niggas know about that shit. When we talk about the swap meet, bro, niggas know. And you know, sound dangerous. What? Swap meat. Swap meats are very dangerous. Cause I feel like swap meats are very everybody dangerous. Bro, goes, like, bro, bro. Like, I'm telling you, I got my fucking, I got a fucking pistol fucking not put on me, but I saw like, my cousin get pistol to his head yeah. my first trip to the Slaws and Swap Meat. We didn't even make it there successfully. We got ran up on on Damn, the way. Damn, didn't even you know? make it. 
And there's a lot, bro. Come on, man. Go. Yeah. All you gotta do, go ask any real LA native about them slots and swap meet stories. I get you. Guarantee you, everyone has one. Yeah. Where they seen something or heard something or yeah, came out to something crazy going on outside the swap meet. But also too, like in there's certain parts of LA, like like in Compton, like we know we have our own swap meet. Like it's the blood swap right. meet. Right, right. And then sure. like the Crips have they swap meet. So yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. they don't be over there. You guys be having your own liquor stores and shit. Yeah. Your own fucking, nah, the you whole shit. Own, you know, because you know it's like yeah. boundaries. Yeah. You ain't going. I, I'm not going to that liquor store. Yeah. Because I'm going to get my fucking head blown off. Yo, you know like, what's crazy? I learned that even there's a lot of gang shit in SAC, right? And yeah. what, a couple of Crip homies I fuck with. I just never understood it, bro. It was like summertime. They'll be like, hey, bro, be safe out there, man. Don't go to the liquor stores tonight. I'm like. Really? Why? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real? I don't go. I mean, I don't drink, bro. It's just because shit Tell pop, me more, that's, bro. That's, that's, where, fuck? that's where shit pops up. Yeah, man. I like, learned that at, shit, bro. Go look at all those videos on World Star of the shootings. Yeah. Where are they happening at? Yeah, gas, like, stations gas stations and liquor stores. stores. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Bad spot to don't be at late at night. Store, huh? Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll go to BevMo and just hey, play it safe. Come you know what on, saying? bro. Compton, guaranteed, bro. Uh, guaranteed. And a lot of a lot of a lot of cities in LA. Not just Compton, a lot of cities in LA. You gotta just know, like, bro. That gas station, all that lacking at the gas station, just no, sir. oh, I'm just outside pumping gas. And nah, shit, bro. you better get your ass in the car, bro. Wait till that gas is done. <laughs> so let me ask you this, bro. Now it's time to shout out your favorite plug from back in the day, bro. Oh man, who's your favorite plug? My, Who took care of two stack? Bro? My favorite plug, man. Back in the day, I gotta shout my guy out because he's the fucking most. Un Instagrammable, un social media, never find him, never oh, has no been, doubt. never will be. Fucking plug, my man. Oh man, we just gonna keep it at that. Cause that's you don't it, need man. That's to, all we my, 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 my need, man. Oh, that's all you need to know. Well, my man, oh, man, been hold me down for about 25 years, bro. Wow. Like, good, good. He got me my first OG pack for 68. Oh shit, bro. 6,800, I think. Ooh. And there's 7K of the first fucking pack I Ooh. fucking OG I got when Sheesh. it first hit the scene. But then after that, you know, we locked it in. I remember when those OG packs were crazy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Stupid. I was in so, Jersey getting my fucking yeah, getting crack, your neck bro. broke. Jesus. Yeah. So it was just what it, it, was, just what it was, bro. Yeah, what, what it was. was. But see, as game. always, as always, like with this Noir Tsunami right here, like with the NorCal Nemo, like with this, is that was the NorCal Nemo of its day. Yeah, that it was, was the was. first pack. You were like, what? $7,000? And you had the motherfuckers who went and said, you know what? I gotta have it. And you had the motherfucker who sat on the sideline and said, What? Seven thousand dollars? I'll never pay that. Okay. We just well, bought you the never bus pay down. and yeah. you'll never play. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's the difference yeah. with this this shit now. Like a lot of people getting, oh, they're getting, hey, weed is gonna cost what the fucking grower wants to charge. If he wants to that's charge it, you bro. fucking two thousand a pack, that's cool. If he's charging you fucking fifteen K a pack, that's his fucking shit. That's if it, he's gonna live up to it, and if it lives up to it, you're gonna, you know, and he has the demand and has hey. You're going to fucking get it or you're not going to get it. That's the bottom line. Period. So shout out to my boy Sheesh, man. I, he he put me, we sat down, you know what I'm saying, and, and talked about it. I told him straight up, like, I need the best. This has been the situation since those days of the OG. Mm-hmm. So we're, nothing's changed. We're just, you know, my hair fucking got a little bit shorter, a couple more grays. You know what I'm saying? That's about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, same we're still, program. We still out here on the same program. That's right. But it's like always about having the best and- I gotta have it, so I'm never gonna sit back and complain about somebody's price. I'll just drop the bag, deal with it later, and then when watch when all the little little people who, you know, who ain't gonna drop the bag, which is 99 percent of humanity, and then you get the bust down. All right, cool. Yeah, you just gotta you get guys custody, come get bro. you. You guys are gonna come get custody because you didn't wanna you wanted to sit up there and complain about you'd never pay. Yeah. Okay, well then you're gonna pay this. X amount of times over and end up Just paying more on, on the fucking long run. Yeah. So we call that bad math, but and know. on and on and on this thing of and ours on and goes. on and on as the thing goes. You know, you know this thing saying? of ours. So you know. Yeah, it's bro. It's just like it's just a matter of like dropping your nuts, bro. Like That's I, it. I'm always fucking no matter what it is. I don't what care. You're not saying, man. I don't care what That's pack right. it is, bro. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna get it. If it's gas, I want it. I want to try it. I want to see. I want to smoke it. I want to you That's know a observe. And see yeah, if it's bro. the hype. And shout out to Noir Tsunami because it's definitely living up to the fucking hype. Yeah, shout it's not out. even it's hype. Sticky weed, man. This shit is I haven't crazy. Had sticky, sticky fucking weed. Look at that. Forever, look, at, look, at look at the fingers. Look at this shit, man. Oh, God, we're throwing a big bees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> look shit. at the fucking stick on Hell that. Oh yeah, man. bro. Well, shit, bro. Before we get up out of here, man, I'm gonna hit you with some real quick rapid fire questions. We're all gonna right, drop our right. handles and then get the fuck up out of here. Yeah. All right. So check this out. These are one word answers. Okay. 
Do you like to smoke in the hot or the cold? Cold. Joints or blunts? I know this answer. Blunts. Bongs or bowls? Ooh. Bowls. Cold star. Are you dab? Lightly. You dab? Light? Lightly. Rig or puffco? Um, you torture? We're fucking hitting that little puffco, keeping it cool. I like them both, really. But oh. I would say a rig. All right. Street smarts or book smarts? Both. Batman or Superman? Batman. Haze or sour? <sighs> sour. Nas or Hove? Nas. Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat? Mortal Kombat, finish him. Regular doinks or hash holes? Hash holes all day. Past that or I'm smoking this to the facials? Smoking it to the face. Roll your own shit, nigga. What's your favorite Ninja Turtle? Raphael. Oddly enough, it's Michelangelo. I can see that. I can see Raphael that. Yeah, you got I was going to say. Next all right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's the first no. time I've ever answered for somebody. My yeah, bad. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it was the obvious choice. No, 80s yeah. or 90s? Damn. It's a tough one. That's tough. It's a tough one. I'd have to say 90s because I was more grown. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Every time. NorCal or SoCal? Fuck. Sorry, pal. <laughs> You've made your mark in both places. I'm going to have to stay true understand. to the home team, though. I understand. I'm going to have to stay true to the home no team, SoCal. We got a little bit more lit nightlife. Uh, pizza or tacos? Ooh, coming with the tough ones. <laughs> Damn. They get worse. I'm going to have to say tacos. Where'd you go? Tacos. Tacos? Pizza with pineapples or no pineapples? Ooh, I ain't gonna lie. I fuck with the pineapple, but Ooh, the pineapple geez. cannot be canned. It has okay. to be fresh. Okay, bro. We'll I take. We'll take. I don't it. like. I don't like the fucking dole on my shit. Dole juice and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chop my shit up, up and then throw it on there for or real. leave it the fuck off. Yeah, man. leave it's it the a... fuck off. I know <laughs> you Italians don't take fucking kindly. It's all good, bro. Hey. Hey. Pizza with ranch or no ranch? A uh, little bit of ranch. A little bit of ranch. All right. I don't fault my California friends for that, by the way. <laughs> um, tacos or burritos? Uh, I'm going to still rock with tacos. In and out of five guys? In and out. Cheetos or Flamin' Hot Cheetos? Flamin' Hot. The Wire or The Sopranos? <sighs> to totally redeem yourself. He's a fucking sky, he's a fucking guy. God damn, I can't even make a call on that one because the wire is the black soprano, so it's like ah, you know. I'm gonna have to go tie on that one. Pacino or De Niro? God damn it. Pacino. Godfather one, two, or three. Two. Automatic or revolver? Automatic. You have to smoke Disty Carts or last year's outdoor for one month. What you going with? Ooh. Give me last year's outdoor. <laughs> you got to smoke Jack or Blue Dream for the rest of your life. What you going with? Fuck. <laughs> Jack or Blue Dream. God, I hate both of those. I know. Oh, so give me, in there, give bro. me the Blue Dream. Fuck it. Make it blue a blue dream, baby. Lost in the woods, you get a pack of matches or a hatchet. What you going with? Give me the hatchet. You're getting chased by a shark or a bear. Who you going with? Who am I going with what? To kill me? Yeah. Oh, the shark's going to get me. You're going down. So. You prefer to die by a shark. Okay. No, I wouldn't prefer to, but I just know in the water I stand no chance. <laughs> okay. No, no. You get the option to choose who's chasing you. So you get to choose your oh. terrible death. I thought you were saying what, which. Okay, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you're for sure done in the water. Oh, I'm done either way, but I would say, yeah, I don't know. I'd rather go with the fucking, the shark, just get it over with. Shark. The bear seems like it'll take a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, you're getting chased by a cocaine bear or a cocaine shark. We're going to sweeten the pot. We're going to fucking trying to figure out a way to fucking just Still do going some shark? cocaine and not fucking kill me. <laughs> that's, the best, that's the best answer yet, pal. Best answer Let's yet. How to fucking, let me hit a bump and let's just yeah, chill. Yeah. <laughs> Face shot or body shot by Mike Tyson? 
Ooh. Yeah, I know. Give me that body shot. Oh, yeah. Shot of 151 or a hot dab, 900 plus. 151. Gelato runs Terps or OG Gas? OG Gas. Tupac or Big? Pac. Wu-Tang or Death Row? Death Row. No doubt. No doubt. My man, my man. Well, yo, this was a fucking great episode, my yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah. No, um, yeah. Something like. I'd like to share with people before we wrap up, you know, how do we meet? And then who do you know that I should know that I should get on the show? So I believe we met. I think it's just Instagram, bro. Yeah. We just I don't know. I just, each other I just seen, the, I seen the, the, the brand, the good pizza brand, and then I attributed that to the Italian. And then I just I think I started seeing you post some funny Italian stuff. And then I was just, you know, I'm always coming with the wise guy voice. Hey, what do you say? I smoke a few cannolis. You know what I mean? Cause I see my guy over here fucking doing the fucking British thing. What are we doing over here? You know what I'm saying? Wise guys. <laughs> so I just, uh, I you it. know, I figured it'd be one, one fucking, one, one fucking Guido fucking welcome another. You know, this is what right. we do out That's here, right, man. man. And show love and, you know, we push That's the fucking, is, push bro. each other's brands. I Damn saw what right. you were doing. I was like, you know what? This guy seems like a real cool individual. Let me go fucking tap in. When I seen this guy was affiliated, I'm like, okay, I definitely fucking know this fucking guy. This fucking, this fucking guy this over here. fucking wise guy over here. So, <laughs> Tony. Know, fucking about Tony over Tio here. Tio fucking Tony over here. <laughs> Tio Tony. You know, with Hello. the fucking Italian bulldog, not the English, not you know the French. <laughs> Shout out to Enzo. <laughs> Shout out to Enzo. Fucking shit Enzo. Shit, 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 shit in, in all the studio. Shit in shit the studio so before Uncle Zach fucking. come through. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's all love out here, though, man. Yeah, it's all right. What are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Fucking wise guys. But yeah, no, it's been fucking all love out here. Well, Who should I get on the show, bro? Who should you get on the show? I think you should definitely check out, I don't know if you'll come out the fucking caves of Baltimore, my man Sheesh. You should check out my yeah, man. I need some more uh, East Coast fellas on the show, man. Yeah, check him out. I really want to highlight him because he's like, you okay. know, he's a, I fuck he's growing some tough. phenomenal weed. You know, I fuck with my black growers, too. You got to highlight them out here oh, in this yeah, game, man. you know. So we got him. I, I, you got my boy my boy right here, local, too. My boy, Frosted Flavors. He out here doing his thing. So if you haven't okay. heard about him, definitely check him out. He's local. Yeah, sack. link us up, bro. He does, Hell yeah, yeah, link yeah, us and, up. Uh, I'll link y'all up for sure because he's a cool-ass dude and he's doing his thing out here. So Hell those yeah. are two of my guys, I would say. You know, one local and one East Coast you could check out. Definitely. You know, try and get them, definitely. Get them out here and see what they got Hell going yeah. on. And then real quick before we dip up out of here, bro, please plug whatever you want to plug so we can help you with your mission. You know what I'm saying? Tell the people I mean, where they can shit, find it. You know what it is. First of all, Zach Leaves, the hottest leaf in the game, man. The best leaf, the freshest thing smoking. You can uh, tap in at our Instagram, at Zach Leaves, or you can follow us at Instagram, at Zach, Zach Woods, the brand. Um, shit, we got the Zach Woods grinders here available at Zach'sTrap.com. Check out the website for all merch, all stickers. We got fucking all types of shit. Fucking weed glue, fucking rolling pin, rolling tips, everything you need, Zach Woods, on the website. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else. If you need anything else, you can just tap in with me directly. You know, my Telegram, yeah. Instagram, uh, Snapchat, nigga, Pony Express, however you need mm -hmm. to get the message He's through. Fully nigga, available, <laughs> ready, and activated, <laughs> folks. Holla at your boy. It is what it is, man. We outside. You know what I'm saying? Well, yo, thanks for coming through and chopping yo, stuff, Kujin. For real. Is, that was Kujin. great, man. Much love, That was man. great, man. Yo, you already know what time it is, man. Two Stack oh, Zach and this motherfucker. Holla at him. Good pizza. Two Stack Zach. No tray. No play. No exactly. tray. No play. And watch out for the fucking, I'm not even going to tell you what it is, but watch out for the collab coming soon. To a hood near you and a trap box near you. You hear me? So, yo, we'll see y'all next time, man. Peace, love, good pizza. We up out of here. We out.